broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show, the show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. My name is Jonathan Leung, and with me, as always, is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, how are you doing? Uh, doing great, John. Really looking forward to the show tonight. Well, guys, we have a lot to cover tonight, but we're so glad that you're able to join us. And remember, guys, that you can interact with us during the show in the live chat. So if you have questions or comments that you'd like to share with us, please send those to us in the live chat tonight. Well, Tim, it's been an exciting week for you, it sounds like. What all has been going on since we last talked? Well, uh, last week I made a trip for work and went to Los Angeles, California for the very first time. Okay, so I assume you had a good time? Oh yeah, had a great time. Uh, Learned a lot about, it was the, you know, I've been to California now for, this is my fifth trip. Right. This was the first one I think I met the real Californians. (laughs) Yeah, you met the real Californians. Okay. Now, while you were out there though, Tim, I believe that I was able to set you up a meeting with a very important company that we've been talking about. Yes, I went and saw and played the uh, Player 1-Up cabinets. Or the Arcade 1-Up. Yeah, Arcade 1-Up cabinets in person at the P1 Studios, which is not the manufacturer, but their advertising place. And we'll go into detail about that in a little bit. Actually, we're going to go into detail about that right now, Tim. Because I said we would start off at the beginning of the show. No waiting, Tim. We're not here to Mm -hmm. bury the lead. We're going to start with the lead. Now, Tim, P1 Studios, like you mentioned, is the advertising agency for the Arcade 1-Up cabinets. And we want to thank the folks from P1 for reaching out to us, Tim, and allowing you to make a visit while you were in Los Angeles. Yeah, they were very friendly. Um, It was a little hard to find, not being from the area and stuff. I mean, GPS and stuff. And um, but once I found it, they were very welcoming. Uh, Dale was there to greet me, and uh, they kind of rolled out the red carpet, gave me a grand tour. It was a lot of fun. Enjoyed uh, the time that I got to spend. It's definitely in it's in downtown Los Angeles. Okay, now Pretty Tim, close. Uh, mm-hmm. we've seen a lot of the pictures and everything, but uh, first let's start off with which models did you get to play? So which actual cabinets did you get to play? I played the uh, Centipede cabinet. Okay. I played the Asteroids cabinet i played the street fighter cabinet uh the rampage cabinet and i think that was it the final fight cabinet i saw the final fat fight and turned it on i didn't really play it okay but it was there okay so basically you got to play pretty much the entire like release lineup yeah they were like play whichever one you want uh, if you guys have seen the promo videos, the lineup that they had there, that was what I was there because that's where they shot the video. So basically the five the five um, cabinets across that you saw, those are the five cabinets you got to play. Right. Okay. And, and I saw a couple in the works, but I can't tell you what, what they are. And maybe we'll <laughs> share a little bit with that. Now, Tim, I'm going to go ahead and throw the pictures up because you actually yes. took some pictures while you were there. So let's go ahead and throw up this one. Now, Tim, it looks like you spent a lot of time specifically with the centipede cabinet. Is that correct? Yes, I, I'll say right off the bat that it was by far my favorite. Okay, so let's go ahead and show some pictures of that, guys. So this is Tim uh, standing next to the centipede cabinet and uh, playing it. Now, Tim, you'll notice here in the pictures that this is with the optional one fit riser, correct? Right, this had the riser on it, which definitely, if you're going to stand up and play, makes a lot of difference. Right, so, I mean, you got to play it at that level. How was it with the riser? Did you, I mean, was it a big deal that it was, you know, that it was maybe a little bit shorter than a regular cabinet? Did that bother you at all? Were you okay with it, or how did it play? I mean, that's It kind of felt like a cabaret, okay. and, uh, which we've had before. I mean, at first it looks like a Moppet when you see the little one, you know? Right. And, uh, but being around kitty games and stuff, that was not that unusual or... Um, Actually, I'll, I'll just say this right off the bat, guys. I was I really liked them more when I saw them in person. Okay, so you felt it like... was, and for a while there, we we were waiting on him to get there. We were pretty anxious uh, to play them. So you know, it took five minutes. I'm just sitting there looking them over, what looking looking at all the aspects of them, and uh, yeah, they're a lot smaller than an arcade game, but they play played really good and we'll talk about that i'm sure well let's go ahead and talk now tim you got to play all of them so you say your favorite was the centipede why was it your favorite why was that the one that you felt like was was the favorite out of the ones you got i would just say as a collector and guys know us that we have this is not our first rodeo we've been around games been working on games uh we've been together over 10 years i own a centipede 
And it was the one to me that kind of had a the best feel. The trackball felt good. Uh, the play was fine. The sound was good. Uh, it even had a little hesitation. You can tell it had been programmed to... It wasn't super smooth. You ever played a centipede that was really good? Yes. And it doesn't feel right? Right. This felt just like I was... I really... Outside of... If you would have taken me and blindfolded me and put me up there, I, I would have thought I was playing a, a like a centipede cabaret. Wow. It was... So the, the controls... So you were impressed with the controls. I really liked the controls on that one. The artwork was good. Um, I've, the centipede was my favorite if, to far as feel of a game. Now, I really liked the way a couple of them looked. I liked the artwork and stuff. But the centipede caught my attention the most. And I believe that's one that I shot and, and kind of drew myself to just naturally. Okay, so go ahead and give us the rundown of the rest of the cabinet. So let's go over the asteroids next. What do you think about the asteroids cabinet? Now, the asteroids plays more than just asteroids. It plays Tempest and some others. Major Havoc. Major Havoc's on there. On there. So which what is kind of different if you've never, you know, a lot of, where are you going to get one, you exactly. know? Exactly. So what did you think about the Asteroids cabinet? Okay. Centipede was probably my favorite. The Asteroids cabinet was probably my least favorite. Really? And I, You're a big Asteroids fan. And I'm a big Asteroids fan. And it's not because it wasn't Vector, you know, it didn't have a... It had... Asteroids actually played pretty good. I caught myself playing it a couple times. The one game I didn't like on that cabinet was Tempest. Okay, so, so what was wrong with Tempest in particular? I didn't like the control... It did, you so know, there was a spinner. Did, there is a spinner. There on is it. a spinner on it, but the original Tempest, you can whirl that thing, and it makes that noise, that whirl sound, and it'll go spin around really fast. This did not have quite the feel. Now, did I? I had fun. I played it, yes, but I didn't like the the Tempest spinner. To okay. me, that would need a little tweaking. In, for my liking. Now, okay, but what about Asteroids? How was Asteroids on that cabinet? Asteroids was pretty good, except for, you know, it's not a vector monitor, but, I mean, it's okay. And I was I was playing Asteroids just like I was, you know, kind of reliving some childhood memories there. And from the time uh, we've had an Asteroids before, I liked it. Um, and, like I said, just because I said it was my least favorite, I'm not saying I dislike it. I'm just saying that out of all of them, I just I don't I'm a Tempest fan. I right, love exactly. I like Tempest, and the centipede played the trackball felt like an arcade style trackball. So I really liked the centipede the way it felt. I didn't like the way the spinner felt on the asteroids. Okay, so but what I thought the artwork was real cool on it. So what was your what was an, the other one? Let's talk about the rampage. What did you think about the three player rampage? You know, I was worried that it would be really tight to right. play three people. Right. And I think three grown men, if you were sitting there, honestly, would be a little bit tight, but it's playable. It's doable, especially if it was on a riser. It wouldn't be as bad. Um, the real control panel is actually pretty big. Remember that? So right. I'm kind of surprised they chose the rampage. But once you get to playing it, your your mind you're goes. In the you, game, you're right? in the game. You you forget about that kind of stuff. The stuff that looked like would be a problem when I'm sitting there. When I go into playing, it really didn't matter as much. Gotcha. I mean, I haven't played Rampage since I owned one right, years exactly. ago. It's been a long time. And been a long time since I even played it. I was playing Rampage and having fun. Awesome. Okay, so what about Street Fighter? That's I know a lot of people here are probably wondering about Street Fighter. So what here's, about the Street Fighter? Here's guy? what caught my attention immediately with the Street Fighter was the graphics just pop with that LCD monitor in it. it you can see in the picture. You want to go ahead and bring up that picture, John? Yeah, and I'm going to show this one here. These are some more pictures, guys, that we have. And this, you'll see the asteroids here. And, you know, Tim, I think the difference is that with Street Fighter being a newer style game, that animation is a lot better than, of course, what we have in, like, Asteroids or Centipede or things like that. But uh, you can see here that we have the asteroids. Tim, you also took a picture of the spinner on the asteroids. Yeah. So we can kind of get an idea of that. But you have the Street Fighter here, and uh, we actually have a video of that, Tim, which we'll be playing here in a second. Okay. Play of, uh, actually, your friend David, I believe, playing yeah. it. Yeah. And so I'll be showing that. But even in that picture, Tim, you can tell that screen just really pops. It's yeah. real sharp. That's one thing you'll notice about the Street Fighter right off the bat is it's very vivid, very bright. And um, David was having a great time playing that. In fact, that was... He's uh, about your age, Johnny, a little 10 years old. Now, he's also than me. a game tech like you. He's a game tech. He's not a collector. And I really valued his opinion because, I, in fact, you know, I'm, I drug him all the way over there with me. And uh, I was wondering, you know, it was 45 minute drive and all that stuff. 
And afterwards, he was had a blast. I think he wants to order one. So it was like... So you made a sale. <laughs> he, he really, really enjoyed, and he kept playing that Street Fighter over and over and over. He did say, the sec, within 10 seconds, he looked at me and he was, I don't like this joystick. Right. That's the first thing he said. And you'll notice that it, it doesn't quite have the arcade quality feel. But um, my opinion is... Still very playable. It's very playable. After a while, he was playing. I said, "How? what do you think about the joystick now? He's like, I would change. I would put my own joystick in there. That's what he said. Right. And he doesn't know, doesn't collect any games. But then he said, but at least I could play it with that one. And he was having fun with it. And he was definitely, was pretty good too. So I I didn't challenge him or nothing. But... (laughs) um, I did like the the vivid colors of it. It really stood out. So we're going to be playing the videos here in a second, guys. But you also got to see the final fight, which technically has been delayed till the spring of next year, I believe. Yes. So, I mean, what did you think of the artwork package? Did you get to see the game actually running at all? or? Yes, we turned it... I'm, I'm trying to remember, John. It seems like we turned it on and... Uh, it was the same way, bright graphics and stuff. I didn't play that one very long. If I did, okay, uh, we had a we didn't have they didn't rush us or anything, but it was already getting kind of dark towards dark. And, and mentioned we were in downtown Los Angeles, so <laughs> you were wanting to get out, right? <laughs> us Texans weren't real comfortable at that moment. But I, but the artwork and stuff was really cool. I re, there's a good picture of it there. Yeah, and I'm go, I'll am go ahead and show that back up here. So the one on the end, of course, is the Final Fight cabinet, though. But, Tim, I tell you what, the artwork packages on these things look really sharp. That's one thing that they said they wanted to do is to make sure. Um, now, the cabinet itself is about is half an inch thick. It's okay. not three-quarters inch like most games. Right. But it's not quarter, quarter inch. inch. Right. So it's kind of that middle of the road. You know, it's in, in the middle and we got an interesting video I want everybody to see. I was impressed on that how the um, I could I actually picked one up. So yeah, so the, well let's go ahead and show that we'll video. Show so I'm video. gonna show them in the order that you filmed them here, Tim. So this is Tim's first video on the weight of an arcade one up cabinet. Hey, this is Tim with Arcade Repair Tips video series, and we're at the P1 Studios. We are looking at the arcade one up arcade cabinets and uh, we're having a good time uh, learning about these things one thing I want to show you guys is how great they look they look really good in person but one of the things that I want to show you is how light they are and I am actually going to pick it up <laughs> and I'm just going to pull this one off so anyway I want you guys to see it's not very heavy all of you who watched me before know my back issues in the past so I'm glad to see that they're not that heavy Okay, Tim. So obviously these things are pretty light. If you were able to pick one up, I just picked it right up. It was yeah, they're really light. And was kind of surprised how light it was. But that's not actually I mean, really well, a bad thing. Because of the size. Yeah, too. I mean they're just smaller than an arcade cabinet, so they're lighter as well. Yeah, I didn't get to see inside of them, but Dale talked to me a lot about how they're made. Uh, the all the wiring is soldered on. Okay. And so you know. It, it just seemed like it's pretty tight. Like there's wouldn't be that big a deal to put one together. Sure. And uh, it seems like most of it comes pre-done. Uh, one thing I want to point out, you might notice in the si- in the video on the side. I don't know. Yeah, put maybe pull up this uh, Street Fighter. Yes. And if you guys will look up in the corner, up near the marquee on the right side, they all have a hole where the screw is sunk in. Okay. And. Um, that's one thing I mentioned to him was, you know, there's a lot of stuff that cover those type of holes. Sure. And But that's how they roll out. Now, so. it looked like on the centipede, Tim, and I'm going to go back here, that artwork actually covered that area. Is that correct? Here, yeah, let me a see lot if I can of, bring that up real quick. Uh, yeah, it looks like on this one, the artwork actually covers that area. Yeah, but see, it really stood, and if it, if it doesn't, it doesn't stand out as much as it does on that black cabinet. Sure. It's countersunk in. And, uh, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I'm just saying, I know some of these well, guys, I would fill that in. And, and here's the thing, you're assembling it. So if that's yes. something that you want to do, you can obviously do it, right? Sure. So if you want to touch that up a little bit. Now, Tim, we have a couple more videos here, of course, that we want to play. And so I'm going to play the next one here. Tim, I call this the gameplay video. Okay. So this is your friend David playing the Street Fighter, right? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and play that one. I want to show you some of the action gameplay here. As you can see, the graphics. The screen looks really good. This LCD screen that they have in there is plenty big. My buddy David is sitting in a chair here and he is playing. 
Also, the buttons and the joystick are not quite tap controls, but they are very good. They're not too cheap. Uh, they will do, and then you can replace them with something more heavy duty if you need to later. Now, Tim, I think that video does a really good job of showing how much that screen pops. Yeah, it really does. I mean, it really yeah. does. I mean, it, it is very bright. I was so surprised when I saw that video as to how good that LCD looked. Yeah, it, it does. It's a, it's a quality LCD in there. And because, uh, you know, when you think about a previous cabinets, I mean, you know, we had the one that was sold at Sam's, had a little 13 inch CRT in it. Remember right. that? The and Big Idea like, Electronics or yeah, something like that. I and, forget. And uh, this really looks good as far as that goes and it's really very bright. All of all the games, even the Asteroids looked really good on it. Okay. Now we have one more video here, Tim. This is kind of like what I call the overview video. Okay. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and play that. And then we're going to talk about some of the things you like, some of the things you dislike. Or sure. Not, and, you know, we'll just go through that. And uh, so let's go ahead and watch this one real quick and then we'll come back. Okay. We are back at the P1 Studios looking at the Centipede game I made by RK1UP. Um, as you can see, this one has the riser and it's quite a bit taller. You know, the height was a lot of our concern. And this is much more, I'm standing straight up, I'm not bending over, and I am playing this game. Here's a, another cool feature. Let's say the uh, phone rings or I've got an answer. I can turn the volume off. You guys can't hear that. It goes into silent mode. And then I can easily just flip the switch right here and turn the volume back on. So volume on, volume off. That's kind of a cool feature that um, is not, it's right here, easy to do. Also, just turn the whole game off. When I'm done, it boots up pretty fast. I'll show you guys how fast it boots up. So, there I've turned it on, and it will come on really quick. There's a cool menu screen, says RK1 up, and it doesn't take, you know, like a 60 and 1 takes uh, forever to count up. We're already up and going here. So thank you guys for watching. Okay, Tim. Well, I, I, one of the things I noticed in that video, of course, is it booted up very fast compared to like a 60 and one or something like right. that. Right. It proved really fast. And uh, also, I think I demonstrated the uh, sound on and off. Yes. I don't know why. I just thought that was different. <laughs> well, you know, if it's you got a, if you big have a deal, phone but call or something, call, something game, just turn right? it off. Absolutely. Or you... You know, your kids in the, on the toilet, like a Steve Weeby or something, you go, like, hey, hold on a second. You know, turn it back on. Um, anyway. Um, well, let's go over uh, some of the things that you liked about them as a whole. So what were the what were the things that stood out to you? What were the, the, the things that you really liked about these arcade one-up cabinets? Okay. I'm going to be honest. You know, just coming from a collector that had never normally would never be interested in purchasing anything like this. Because... Yeah. Why not? I can build a centipede, or I can build a 60 in one or full-size one. I actually liked them more in person than I thought I would. Nice. That's so, just, what, so what made you like them more? Uh, the artwork is, is really stands out, and they look cool. They When you see one, you're like, that that's a cool-looking little machine, and I wanted to play it. Immediately, so I it couldn't drew wait. You in, it drew me, drew me in. in. I wanted to play. Then once I played it, it was good enough. I mean, it was, yeah... Uh, somebody asked, I think, were the original ROMs. He talked to me some about the programming and how they slowed down Centipede and they did some stuff. I don't know. I assume they are because they had to buy the rights to them. Sure. Now, now what do you think about the overall cabinet quality? The overall cabinet, uh, you know, I would have rather it been a little bit thicker. Right. For my opinion. But when I picked it up, I was like, that's not that bad. It would really be cool to have this in an office somewhere or something. And then you got some friends coming over and you pull them all out real quick or put them back to back or something, then put them up against the wall, put it in a closet. I mean, you know, the more I thought about it, I was like, when I picked it up, I was like, well, that's kind of cool because, you know, we have to get a dolly or a friend to help us. Or at my age, you know, it's like I have to hire somebody to move a game. But um, so that was pretty neat to just be able to pick it up. Overall, you know, would I build it different? Yes. Would I charge more than two hundred ninety-nine dollars? Heck yes. <laughs> there you go. So, so for the for the for price. For the price, I'm being honest, guys. For the price, I mean, what what do you expect? This thing is pretty nice for the price. Gotcha. 
I so, mean, I mean, as far as well, the price goes, of a smart watch, right, or something here, you can have this game. I'm just saying, for the price, it's not a bad deal. Okay, it's a good. It's actually a good deal, in my opinion. So, I mean, besides the Tempest Spinner, was there anything else that really stood out to you as far as things that you didn't like about them? Yeah, the the marquee doesn't light up. Right, it doesn't it have. Would be nice. It doesn't have T molding. Um, but again, you're hitting a price point. Exactly. You for that price, yeah, it's pretty good. Now, one thing I did talk to them about is, um, you know, and another thing I thought, well, these cabinets are kind of cool. I would like, if I get one, I would probably mod it and do some stuff to it. Sure. You have a really fun cabinet. Um, but then I talked to them about maybe doing a generic type cab and just selling it and letting people do whatever they want to with it. Um, and also maybe making a more of a collector quality cabinet with the light marquee with, with the, the light mo- marquee like better joysticks better buttons um t molding, molding stuff like that and they weren't opposed to it they didn't say no but they did give me a secret about the size that i think everybody needs to hear yeah and, and guys this is something really important i'm just going to draw attention to it because when you told me it made perfect sense so tim tell the audience what you found out right everybody's really concerned about the size you have to understand the license for this came from a parent company who already were selling games and stuff at Walmart. They were selling little keychains and stuff. Like the little keychain games, like the little tiny arcades? Yeah, and tiny like arcades and different things like that. The Kind of like the ones at Toys R Us before they went out of business. Sure. Um, like the Hallmark or- ornaments. ornaments and stuff like that. Well, they are limited to their license and what they could mass produce could only be up to a certain size. I think it was like three feet. That's why they're that size. If they go bigger, they become a full-blown arcade cabinet, and then you have to pay for a different type of licensing. And there's no way you could get the price lower if you went bigger, in other words, because that license is going to cost you a lot more to go with like a big arcade license, for instance. Exactly. So, guys, cut them a little slack. I mean... It's not a keychain. Right. It's a lot bigger than that. David at first was thinking you would put it up on a bar. He thought it was a bar top but or it's a not. cable no. top. It's not. You put it up there, it's going to be too tall. Right. It'll be too big. Um, it's really with the pedestal, which I don't know that I would pay, what is it, $60 for 50 one? 50 or 60 I'd like bill that. one. Sure. Or put it on something, you know. Um, it's really, when you start playing it, like I was playing Centipede, it's not that bad. Right. I'm not, now, am I saying it's as good as original Centipede? Heck no. To me. Right. But, but $300. But for $300, guys, I mean, that's a really decent cabinet for that price. I wouldn't sell them so for you're, that. So you would, would you say that your opinion overall changed from when we started talking about them to when you saw them? Yeah, because if you remember, we had the debate. Right. And, and although... We, now, the price was different. We thought they were going to be $400 right. at the time. Well, when we debate... We're just having fun. We're not always... We'll pick a side whether we believe in it or sure, not. Right. But I did argue that, you know, what was the point? I Actually, when I saw them, and I saw my friend David, who doesn't own arcade games, start playing at Street Fighter, having a good time, and I thought, this would be so cool if you had, like, four or five of these and a little party or, or kids and stuff. I mean, for a home collector, it has, an, it has a place. Absolutely. And so, my opinion definitely was more positive and just talking to the guys i mean they're you know they're not trying to change the world or upset our arcade you know hundred thousand worldwide community or (laughs) something you know (laughs) right they're just trying to um build a product build a product keep the games up there i think it actually does good for us because when people see that and they say well you know maybe i would like a bigger version one day or something but for the average person they can throw this thing in the back of their car Take it over to their friend's house or go to a Super Bowl party or something. And just, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think that the all the negative things, even that I felt about them in the beginning, are all deserving. Now, would I have done it a little different? Probably so. And s- some of you probably would have too. I think some things are making. So I talked to them about an upgrade that maybe they would do a collector upgrade. And they seemed kind of open to that idea. But you got to understand, we're talking about mass production. They're wanting to make money. Right. And they're wanting to get these things and all the game stops. And well, and they just don't take up that much space either. And overall, I give them a, a good thumbs up. They're fun to play, guys. I, 
That's don't know what matters. What, that's, that's what, what matters. matters. I mean, you play the game, you have fun for for that cost. It's really not a bad deal. And I'll I'll you know take any questions or anything. Uh, did my opinion change? Yes, somewhat. A um, couple things that we might mention. There were uh, oh oh yeah, I forgot a, I forgot one thing here. Um, you got to see a hit a secret game. Yes. So I'm just gonna throw it up here. Okay. So um, what's under the cover, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can't tell say. you, but I'd have to kill you, right? Oh, I mean, that's so I cannot say except for it again um, keeps in line with the classic arcades, right? I believe that if you go to <clears throat> Arcade One Up Europe, you might have a better hint. <laughs> I think that they're already producing some of these. And he told me about another one. They were too excited. They they're getting they're gonna be more coming out. Sure. And so I thought that's kinda it's really kinda cool, guys. I, I think for the price point, you can own uh what so uh, three Somebody months. says it's Pac Man. I good not, guess. I would say that that would be a good guess. <laughs> that's not, but that's not what's under there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So anyway, well, uh, Tim, you'll leave us in suspense, I guess, on that. But we do I want promise. to remind you guys that if you want more information about Arcade One Up, you can go to arcade one upcom Check them out on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash arcade one up official. And also check them up on Twitter at arcade underscore one up. Tim, it sounds like you had a great time. And again, we want to thank P1 Studios for yes. allowing you to come in and actually take a look at the cabinets. They were very accommodating to Tim and David, his friend. And so we want to thank them so much for allowing us to come in and take a look at them. And Tim, for you to get to play them. Yeah, Here, here's my goal. I think I would like to get one. Um, I may wait on the one that's coming out. Okay. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Oh, like the one under the cover? Or? No, the one that's in the works. Okay, because there is, I mean, there's... Best Buy has a model that you didn't get to see. Right. The combo the, model. They have the... Uh, it has the Asteroids and Centipede kind of put together. Yeah. Guys, the only thing about that is that it's a horizontal display. Okay. Okay, so if you're playing Centipede on that, it's going to be smaller than the Centipede. Ah. Okay, so if, you're, if your primary goal is to play Centipede, I would yeah. say get the Centipede cabinet. Um, but if your primary goal is to play the horizontal games, like, like Asteroids, then that cabinet may be better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you get more options with it. It's 400. It comes with the riser already, and it has a 12-in-1. It's a 12-in-1 system. Okay, 12-in-1, yeah. So, I mean, if that may be an option for you. Again, though, playing vertical games on that, you're going to have a smaller screen, Tim, because right. of orientation. It wasn't there, or right. I would have definitely played it. Okay, so if anybody has any questions about the 1-Up Arcade Cabinets, uh, please send them in the chat. Um, we're going to, um, we'll give them to Tim here, if there's anything specific that uh, has to do with the ones that he yeah, saw. I think our biggest argument is when what we're all arcade people in general are going to say is too small. Right. But, again... I understand their restraints, and it really, when you get to sit down and you play it, it's not as bad as you think. I'm just going to be honest. It's really not horrible, and for that price, guys, that's a it's a decent deal for what you get. Okay, I'm going to look in the live show here, Tim, and see if there's anything in here. Let's see. Um, uh, is it worth building a game room around these, thinking of grabbing six of them? So, see, I... I thought about that, and I thought, I mean, if you don't have this in your background, right. you know, or you have a smaller space, or even if you like have an a, apartment, I mean, you could apartment. have a game room in your office, you know, and apartment combo thing. You See, know? and I, I, I liked it, and that's what I thought. I, that's kind of what I was thinking. I'd like to buy one, maybe another. Um, guys, if you've seen our older videos, I had a big shop, and now I just have a garage, right? And my space is a lot more limited. And I usually got a game in there that I'm working on or something. So I was actually thinking that would be really cool. to It could sit in the garage, but then if I had some guests over, I could run, just bring it in the house real quick and drop it in the living room. My wife's not going to let me keep yeah. it in the living room all the time. Right. But I could easily carry Pick it, it in there. Take it out, yeah. That's what I think is the, to me, is one of the best features about it, that it's so portable or throw it in the back of my car. Now, some people are asking, uh, some, somebody said they've already got the pre-order from Best Buy on the 12-in-1. Okay. And the 12-in-1, I think, is still a, a good option, Tim. You just have to remember that playing the vertical games on it is going to be gonna smaller. It's going to be smaller, okay? yeah. Because vertical games will still be vertical, vertically oriented, even though it's a horizontal monitor. So it's something to keep in mind. Tim, uh, people want to know about scan lines. Any scan line uh, emulation or anything like that, or are they straight up, like, digital? You know, no, I thought there was some... It, the... Um, because you've played before. we play, First time I ever saw LCD and a Miss Pac-Man, I said it looked too good. Right. And I think they did something in that, because if you've seen that Centipede video, it was 
not popping like the like the Street, a Street Fighter. Fighter was. Right. I think that, and I, you know, the so, guy that was touring us didn't really know. Sure. But I think by looking at it, yes, it did kind of have. They a did more, something. It may not be in scan lines, but there's some sort of emulation going on that's kind of giving you more of that yeah, arcade feel. It's not as bright and bold as the other. And which I was fine with, but but actually, even playing the asteroids, though it wasn't a vector monitor, it still was kind of bright. And sure. It kind of looked like asteroids to me. They somebody tweaked on that a little bit, knew what they were doing. Sounds good. Let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see how how about some ROM info on the game. Really, not a whole lot that we know as far as that's concerned, right? Yeah, and I don't think it's it's. I know it's not a Raspberry Pi in there. I right. know it'll be something proprietary. Um, I didn't look inside them and wasn't allowed to. I say right. that much. So I would very much be interested in opening that. We know there's just a single board though that has like basically everything on it. Yeah, I mean, it's like a sixty and one board or a Raspberry Pi type board, yeah. something like that. That's just kind of in there. Okay, so right. I mean everything kind of goes to it. We do know that. So, um, but let's see. It'd be interesting to see some some people will definitely want to mod it. And yeah, it'll be fun it'll be to a do. little bit tougher to mod though because of that all-in-one board type scenario. But it'll be doable. I, I yeah, believe it will be doable. I think so too. So okay, well I think that's about all we have for now. But if you guys have additional questions about the arcade one up as we go through the show, please let us know. Uh, Tim, from here we're going to go ahead and answer the questions like we normally do. I know we're how, how we're like thirty minutes in right at this right. point. So um, we're getting kind of a late start on the questions portion. But we hope that all you guys that tuned in for the arcade one up stuff stick around because we're going to be talking about some of the questions we get Tim from our regular viewers about right. repairing arcade games and we know that anybody tim who's interested in an arcade one up is probably interested also in owning a real arcade or a big size arcade game at sure. some point in the future as well so and we hope you, you guys stay still around. have a question just go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll come back to you absolutely oh uh, somebody says uh, any talk of light gun games and I think that's going to be tough with the Arcade 1-Up because, because they have the LCD monitor. Because of the so. LCD monitor. Uh, maybe, Tim, there are obviously like guns that are compatible with that, but we we're probably going to see a price increase if that happens, I'd imagine. And I think they're trying to really stick to a classic, really old-school lineup. Right. I'm saying 1984 and down. Right. So that gives you well, an idea. Well, I mean, you got the, Street Fighter in there, right? Yeah, I that's mean, true. So some of the more just popular games. I think it's like Yeah, I would at. just say the... the well, what people would consider the highest classics, although uh, gun games would definitely fit into that. I just don't know how they're going to get get it to work with the LCD screen. That would be the question, and I think it and, will. And they did, cost. and they did not mention uh, that one coming down the pipe. I'll say that much. Okay, nothing about light gun games. Okay. Right. What about driving games? Nothing. No, didn't okay. say anything about driving game. But those are. I think that if they're successful. I would think that they would probably consider. And, and Tim, like I think that. we've said this too. We hope they're successful. We hope they sell a ton of. Yeah, that's the so. deal, guys. We we kind of bash them ourselves sometimes, or we did. And uh, you know, the main thing is this is getting those games that we love and play back out and, and creating new um, retro feel, I guess you could say, and, right. and bring. So now people are going on Craigslist and they're searching for games that you got for sale because they've heard about this or they saw it and it brought back a memory, stuff like that. So Now, and somebody does say, by far the centipede cab looks fantastic. And Tim, I think you said it yourself, you like the centipede cabinet. And after seeing the ones that I saw too, the centipede cabinet does look like the best. And it's not just looks. I'm talking about the Playability way Playability as well. Felt. Gameplay as well. When I felt it, and that's important did to me. Did you play Crystal Castles on it by chance? Because that's one of my games. You know, I didn't play. I played centipede mostly because I just was you kept like playing centipede, it. I right? liked it and hadn't played it in a while. And um, I did not play Crystal Castles. I forgot about that. Because I think that's a game that my daughter would really get into oh, as yeah. well. You know, because it was, it was a very popular one. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, somebody says they're going to change out the spinner when I get the cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, I, and I probably would. And, and I don't think that... And, and the average person, guys, you you got to understand who's giving the review here. Exactly. The average person probably wouldn't care and will play it. Right. Exactly. You know, it's still that plays. they're selling to. Right. It's still playing. To me... Right. That's one of the things I was like, Centipede felt spot on, like a cabaret. It felt like a, a mini two-inch track ball, two and a half inch, whatever that is, you know, play, playing. But the spinner, I was like, eh, you missed that one. Yeah. They, they should have consulted me on that one. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're going to leave the arcade one-up talk for now. But if you have questions, again, we'll answer them as the show continues on. But, Tim, thank you so much for giving us all your input on it. Yeah, it's thanks. awesome. And thanks uh, to... Uh, what was it, R1 Studios? Uh, P1. P1 Studios, excuse me. P1 Thank Studios you, P1. for letting us come in and, or letting Tim come in and actually take a look at the units. He had a really good time and, yeah. uh, you know, they treat you right, them. right? 
Oh, yeah. There you go. So, okay, guys, we're going to go on with our questions for this episode. So, Tim, uh, the first question we have here is from Jason. He left this as a comment in our previous live show. And his question is, how would a game get stuck in test mode? And, Tim, actually, we've had, it seems like, a lot of questions lately about games getting stuck in test mode. Right. So, when, when an arcade game gets stuck in test mode, what exactly happens? Well, it's a switch somewhere is turned on. It could be inside the coin door. It could be a dip switch on the board. It could be a button that you push to go into test that's stuck. Or for whatever reason, something's jumpered across it and it's shorting out or whatever. But most of the time, it's a, a button or a switch that you turn on that is stuck somehow. Or something on the board is... Every once in a while, you may have a board malfunction cause that but most time it's just a switch inside the inside the door okay well let's go ahead and read what we've got here for jason the test mode on most arcade boards is usually engaged by pressing the test mode button usually located inside the coin door like tim mentioned or flipping a dip switch setting on the board itself so start off this repair by making sure your test mode button is not stuck in other words, check the button to make sure that it is not depressed and that it is wired correctly. You may try cutting the wires if the test mode button uh, to the test mode button to ensure that the connection is not being made. I've had to do that. Right, because a lot of times if that button is no longer working or that switch is no longer working, it may be making the connection all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. You also need to check your dip switch settings to ensure that the test switch is in the off or game mode position. And Tim, that's really what happens a lot of times is that um, somebody will turn on that switch and they'll forget to turn it off on the dip switch. That's mm -hmm. very common. Or like you said, that button will get stuck on the inside of the coin door. Those are two yeah. of the most common I've reasons. I've seen them get mode like stuck. Coke or something. They get kind of stuck. Yeah. They'll just be pushed in and, or, or something. Or they just they do break over time. It's not as likely to break as a they're push button. They're not as tough, too, as push buttons, as you yeah, mentioned. They're, they're like, usually a, a kind of a mini switch. Right, micro or switch. Or something. And uh, they're easy to replace, too, if you need to. It's good to have a test switch button, but like you said... I have had that same problem. I had to cut the wire, and then it went out, and I was like, oh, well, my button was stuck. So, there But go. most of the time, you can read that with a meter, and you'll notice that the button is stuck or beep continuity across it. There you go. And, Tim, I think we've got a lot of people who are guessing bad dips, I see, and I see shorted switch. Yes. And I think those are both the things that we've mentioned. So, exactly, guys, on point, everybody in the chat room. Uh, so hopefully, Jason answers your question. Check your switch on the inside of the coin door. Make sure that's good. Check your dip switches to make sure that it is engaged in game mode. Those are the two things you need to check to make sure that they're working properly. Yeah, not, not impossible, but very rare would it actually be a board failure, and that right. could happen. Right, so there you go. So Jason hopefully answers your question, and good luck getting your game out of test mode. Now, Tim, we got a couple more questions here. Somebody was wondering how the vector games looked on the LCD screen in the arcade one up. So we'll go ahead and go to that real quick. Well, they didn't look like a vector game, vector brightness. Sure, you like know. The mo it didn't look like a vector monitor. No, it looked, but I mean, it looked like you were playing it uh, on an LCD. It was, it was, um, it was okay. Okay. You know that it didn't. I, I don't know if you could emulate that look a little bit better. Right. Um, I think that's what hard. was the game that we used to play on the main, and it was um, with the ge Geometry Wars. Yeah, Geometry Wars. They kind of emulated that look. Sure. And that was not a vector monitor. Right. So that would be my recommendation. So but you can simulate, simulate. It, yeah, right? you can kind of simulate that look. This was more of a plain look, but still played exactly like it was supposed to play. But the look definitely was different. Sound, sounds good. So, um, also, let's see. We have another question here. It looks like from Danny. I have a lethal enforcer's cabinet, clean gun lenses, check for loose wires. I get a white flash on the screen. Still, the screen looks like it's too far to the right. Try to adjust it. Won't move anymore. So, he's saying, I guess... So he says he's cleaning the gun, so I don't know if the gun's shooting too far to the right. Maybe that's what he's saying. Or if the picture itself is too far to the right. I'm assuming that yeah. the gun is shooting too far to the right. Yeah, it sounds like it. And is that both guns? you got two guns. Right. They both do that. You can switch them inside and see if the problem follows the gun or is on your board. There's a chip right under there right. that can go bad that will cause that. But more than likely, it's the circuit board up inside of your gun. Take the gun, open it up. And make sure that uh, the diode or the LED in there is straight. The light sensor. Yeah, that it uh, leg hadn't come unsoldered. And sometimes you have to replace that little circuit board in there if all the cleaning and touching up solder and stuff doesn't work. Sounds good. So, Donnie, hopefully, I, Dan, or is it Danny? Excuse me. Danny, hopefully answers your question. And uh, good luck with your lethal enforcer's cabinet. Let's see what else we got. 
Um, Geometry Wars was awesome. Somebody yeah. says <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and move on, guys, to the next question that we have here on the outline, and it is from Justin. And Justin says, hey guys, I recently purchased my first arcade cabinet, a Play Choice 10. That's a good first game. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It came with... 10 games. That's right. A, first, mm-hmm. a good first 10 games. There you go. It came with Metroid in it. I have since added nine other games and upgraded the BIOS chip so that the reset button would work. Occasionally, when I would turn it on, and now it seems every time when I turn it on, the screen will scroll vertically, almost like a scrambled TV station. I am not finding much online about how to troubleshoot this issue. There seems to be nobody here in Roanoke, Virginia that works on arcades, period. I would like to try and fix it myself before lugging it out of the state to a repair shop. Any advice you may give would be appreciated. So, Tim, we have Justin here who's got a Play Choice 10, and he's having a scrolling picture issue is what it sounds like. Right. And this is very common, especially with those Senior EZ monitors, Tim. What's going on here with Justin's Play Choice 10? Well, hopefully it's just out of sync, or the frequency is or a hold issue or something. Right. And we shot a video on adjusting an arcade monitor. We also have one... I believe where we talk about working in Nintendo cabinets, he might want to check that out. Um, I would say that a lot of people love the EZ monitor and some people just shy away from it. They're kind of scared of I think there are EZ, really the, not that bad, a monitor. Right. But where the some of the dials and stuff are, you do have to be really careful. This is where that TV alignment tool that we talk about will come in handy. Now, if all the adjustment and everything just is not helping at all, then he needs to rebuild his cap, do a cap kit and stuff on it, and hopefully that will help his frequency get in the range where he can uh, will dial it in a little better. Um, you know we've and I've had uh, we've had mixed results like that before, especially with Nintendo games where they just have that slow roll. It's really hard to get rid of. We had that one time we had to change some electrolytic ca- capacitors on one, uh, but usually. Uh, those pots do tend to go bad, so make sure and touch up the solder around those pots, too, and read them with a meter and make sure that they're working. Absolutely. So let's go ahead, Tim. I've got the um, the, the thing here on the outline. A scrolling picture on your monitor is usually caused by a seat a sync, frequency, or hold issue. Most monitors have adjustments for these properties that you can change to help dial in the picture. Try changing these adjustments. See if it helps your issue. See our post on adjusting an arcade monitor for more information. Now, Tim, just a note on the Senior 20Z, found a lot of Nintendo cabinets. The horizontal frequency pot sticks straight up off the board just behind the flyback. Oh, yeah. It's in the worst position ever. Right. Very dangerous, okay? So make sure, like Tim mentioned, that you use a non-conductive tool, like the TV alignment tools that we recommend, to adjust it. That's very important, okay? So um, we're assuming it's the, the Sanyo here. It could be the Sharp as well. That's true. It's a, I mean, it could be a Sharp as well. We've seen a lot of Sanyos, Tim, but there are sometimes the Sharp monitors as well. So there you go. But, um, Tim, a lot of times, though, that horizontal frequency pot seems like that's always the one you need to adjust. Seems Sanyo. like it. So hopefully that answers Justin's question. And uh, just try to do the adjustments like we mentioned and see if that helps the scroll in your picture. A lot of times it will. So, Okay, let's see what we got here. What about putting LED strips around the inside of a marquee on the Arcade 1-Up? So that, that, that was my recommendation is you don't have to do a big light. Just make it a clear uh, silk screen plastic and put some LED strips. That will keep it small and also cost efficient. I definitely think if you want to buy one and do that yourself, it'd be simple to do. Really simple. There you go. And um, I, that was one of the recommendations they seemed to like. Yeah, they were like. I think that's a good. I think that's a good one. Um, let's see. It says as cups go. Um, or this is from Paul. He says as the caps age, they can adjust it so much before. It, uh, you, can, you can't adjust it so much before it will need a rebuild. And that is correct. Yeah. You will eventually have to replace the caps. You may be able to do some adjustments, but a lot of times the caps will need to be replaced. Yeah, by point. the time you're having to get to that point, that's a good indicator that it's good time to go ahead and do your cap kit. Now, Rob said on the Arcade 1-Up that they are the real ROMs and that the pre-orders will be going back up at other retailers later this week. So, yeah, I think that uh, for the most part, Tim, I think it is the real Arcade ROMs. It, it looks must like be it. because I couldn't tell. I right. mean, you know, it was like the sound, everything was spot on to me. There you go. And I can tell when I play Mame what's what's different. Right. Uh, uh, J.E. says, Hi from Brazil. I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, so hello, I don't J. know if it's just G or J.E. I don't okay. know. One of the other. G? Yeah, J? There you go. J? Uh, they also said they're no longer going to be selling the stools. So Arcade 1-Up is no longer going to be selling the little stools to sit at. You see that in some of the pictures, Tim. Yeah. Right? I, on the stool. There was a stool there. Okay, but we they're not that. They're not going to be selling those apparently. Oh, okay. So, well, you know, I think I'd rather have the riser. Yeah. Then the stool. Maybe just me. Or I would build my own riser. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't like... 
He didn't mind sitting at it. Dave was sitting there and playing, and he was having a good time sitting in that stool. No problems, No problems at all. Uh, I think it's comfortable enough to sit down and play, but I prefer to stand up when I'm playing arcade Yeah, that's how it is. I mean, I like my cocktail, okay, but I'm a stand-up. I like to stand up at the game. I understand. So, um, okay, uh, Jason says, can you talk? A f- uh, can you say a few words about the collection behind you? We're going to save that for the after show. Yeah. What a are. teaser. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Save it for the after show. We're going to talk about some of the games that are behind me. Uh, we never really talked about them. No. So uh, we'll be talking about some of the arcades there's behind me. There's some over there, too. There's, yeah, there's some <laughs> over there. There's some over there. Anyway, uh, we'll be talking about those here in the after show. So uh, stay tuned, Jason, for that. So there you go. Uh, let's continue on here, Tim. The next question we have is from Sean. I like this question. Yeah, it was really interesting. He says, yeah. how's it going? I have two Sammy Sega driving games playing maximum speed. I have tried to get them to communicate. I believe I have all the hardware I need and have them set up as slave and master. I have matched the settings and I still get nothing. I have an error code, but I have been unable to find anything that explains that. I have attached a picture of the error code. Thank you for your time. Sean and Tim, here is the error code. Not real, not real explanatory. Um, okay. We do know that NAC means obviously a negative acknowledgement or didn't get an acknowledgement, something okay. to that effect. So um, we know that there's obviously a community. Well, no, no. Yeah, there you go. Well, okay. like um, Tim, when we do communications, usually you know you have a request and a response. Right. And so like if like let's say you send the request but you never get a response, that's like a negative acknowledgement. Got it. Or sometimes it'll send back something you weren't expecting, and that can also be a negative acknowledgement. Learn something new every day. There you Fair go. Enough. That's a that's a computer <laughs> science thing. There you go. So, Tim, we have Sean here, though. He's got these two maximum speed, um, uh, what do you call them, uh, driving games. Yeah. Okay, two maximum speed driving games, but he just cannot get these things to link whatsoever. So, what do you think is going on with the maximum speed games? Why aren't they linking properly? Well, here's what's cool. We're going to talking about Pac-Man and Galaga and Centipede. We're starting to get more questions on what I started working with at Chuck E. Cheese. And, and this falls into that need for speed, those kind of error, those games uh, most of them just have a data cable, kind of like Cat5 that plugs into one, plugs in the other. You do have to go into the settings and you have to tell it this is master. Uh, ma- this is number one, this is number two, or master and slave, slave whatever stuff like that. What's interesting with this game is you can't just run, or we don't think from our research that you can just run a cable over there. You actually need a router in in there. Wow, and uh, that's crazy. This is how times have changed. We, we, we go talking about um, Miss Pack centipede boards and stuff. Now we're talking about putting a router inside of your game. I believe you have a, a screenshot I on do. that. I do. Now talk this is about from the it. manual here, Tim. Now, um, for those who aren't familiar with Maximum Speed, Tim, it is an Atomus Wave game. Atomus right. Wave is kind of an offshoot of the Naomi system, which is kind of part and parcel of the Dreamcast, I guess you could say. Um, so very similar to Dreamcast hardware for those of you guys who are in the console. Supposed to be like early 2000s? Yeah, probably mid-2000s, mid 2000, something like that. But the error code looks like the master is sending the request but is not receiving the response like we mentioned. Unfortunately, we cannot find a manual for maximum speed, but we were able to find a manual for faster than speed, Tim, which is also a Sammy Thomas Wave game. And we've got the link there. It's also below in the show notes. According to the manual, you must have a router inside the cabinet in order to connect the two cabinets together. It will not work if you are running a single LAN cable between the two cabinets. Also, both games must use the same game settings, so double check to make sure all your settings are identical. Tim, he said that. Right. But these pictures we have here are actually from the manual for Faster Than Speed, and you will notice that there is a router here, and the bottom picture is a router mounted inside of an arcade cabinet. Yes. Because you always thought you needed one of those in there. But, but... (laughs) But, John, you'll have to explain this to me. It's not necessarily online like he's hooked up to the Internet. No. It needs it's to just communicate. It's just a network. Just right. a network. So, okay. basically, I guess what's happening is that the Atomus Wave needs an IP address. They don't IP address themselves. Okay. Okay, so they, it needs an IP address in order to communicate. It needs an actual physical network in order to communicate, and that's what the router gives it. The router gives it gives both things, both driving units and IP address that they can communicate and talk on and a network that they can communicate and talk on. So will he need to go buy, a, a, he could go to Best Buy and get a brand new router? Does it need to be an older router? Yeah, or? It could be an older router, I'd assume, because they're probably not running gigabit. They're probably running 100 megabit per second or less. Okay. And so, yeah, probably an older router. Non-wireless would be the kicker. Okay. Okay, non-wireless router. Wow, that'd be hard to find these days. <laughs> well, but you could eBay. probably find an old one, yeah. Um, Goodwill. Uh, Ubiquity sells non-wireless routers, Tim. If okay. you're familiar with Ubiquity products. So you can find them. Um, they sell one for fifty bucks. Okay. Okay. That you can get a fifty dollar router that you could put in there. But Garage according sale. to the manual for faster than speed, it needs a router. 
And both games have to be connected to a router. Raise your hand if you knew the answer to that one. <laughs> so, I thought that was an interesting question. There you go. It's very interesting. And, Tim, I didn't know that either until we started doing research because, like you said, every other game that we've used is one cable in between the two units. Right. right. But, and just link each but other part up. of this could be that what if you have more than one unit? What well, yeah, if you have three so. or four or five units, then w they could all hook to the same router. You see what I I'm saying? I guess so. So I think that's part of it, too. It's, it's better for multiple units to be like that. Interesting. So there you go. So um, hopefully Sean answers your question. Let's try the router in there and hook up both units to the router and see if that solves the problem. If not, please get back to us and hopefully we can find something else that may be able mm -hmm. to solve your issue. So, Okay, Tim, we have a couple of things here. How are the buttons and the joysticks? Will they hold up over time? Tim, I think he's talking about the um, the Arcade 1-Up. So we're going sure. back to Arcade 1-Up, guys. And I'm sorry about, like, the... I feel like we're shifting focus That's here okay. a lot. That's okay. I think a lot of people were here just to talk about that, and we'll... We'll, we'll go back and forth. Absolutely. So on the arcade one up, how are the buttons and the joysticks? How do you think they're going to last? Okay. They weren't the cheapest I've ever felt, and they but they weren't HAP or Imperial or Wicco quality. Sure. I would call them in the middle somewhere. Gotcha. The buttons will work. I wouldn't, you know, basically, here's my opinion. If I buy, say, a, um, Let's see, without giving it away, because I want to buy that one. <laughs> Let's say I, I buy it. a Street Fighter there you go. from them. Because that's got buttons and joysticks. I'll probably just play it. I would think that under normal wear and play, it won't take long for to that to wear those those will probably wear a few months. Now, here's the deal. Then it really depends on how much you're playing it. I don't th yeah, I don't think that I would change them right off the bat. It's not like, oh my God, you can't even play it. it. It definitely has a different feel to it. But it's not horrible, and you can play it. It doesn't quite have... It's not like I'm playing those things that plug in the TV either. Right, exactly. It's not super cheap. But I'm just saying that it just has a different feel. The buttons were okay. The buttons, I've kind of um, kind of used to that because we get new games at Chuck E. Cheese that have a button. Not very many games have a joystick anymore. Right. But a lot of games have buttons, and they kind of have that... Okay, I mean, but what's a button? A yeah. dollar, two dollars, two fifty. Yeah, yeah. Put so the in the switch. The button I would probably leave alone. I'd probably change out the joystick where I would have some on hand just in case. It's in like that um, eight-way feel of it. It's like <clears throat> kind of like it didn't want to go in diagonals. And nothing. These are brand new. Right. And so after some play, they so may... maybe after some play, they may want. Uh, loosen up a little bit all joysticks at first for those of you guys who have never played on new joysticks they're always stiff right yeah off the, right but, off the bat but i love new joysticks from hat you know it's sure. like i get they, that well they still have to be broken in to yeah me. they do right so the buttons were okay though I, and you think they, they weren't you think under normal circumstances they'll last a pretty good while the buttons should they were okay they were the buttons were better than the joysticks okay. to me just an opinion okay Sounds good. Uh, Danny says, are there places you can send your monitor board to get recapped? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we have several of those places listed on our website under the resources page, Tim. That's at arcaderepairtips.com slash resources. You can go there. And there's a monitor repair section there. And I believe Paul um, Jure was in here too. And actually he says, I recap them. So, there you go, um, Paul. Paul. You can send it to Paul and he will mm -hmm. also recap it for you. And since he's in here, we're going to recommend him, right? Yeah. So, we recommend <laughs> Paul highly. There you go. So, um... Mm -hmm. Let's see what else. Can you use a JAMA harness to wire and hook up an elevator action? I th I'm not sure if it's JAMA. Let's say it like that. But right. um, there's probably an adapter you can use to do it. Because yeah. there's adapters for almost every system. Or you can make like. one. Right, or you could make an adapter to convert it to JAMA. I don't know what elevator action is off the top of my head, like I said, Tim. I don't think it's JAMA. I don't either. Louie, can, can you look that one up yeah, for we us? Might have to, <laughs> we might have to have some research. I would think Louis no. There. Right. I would think it's not JAMA, but you can more than likely either build or get an adapter. And somebody may sell one or make you one. Right, exactly. If you search for, you know, like LVR Action to JAMA or something like that, you'll probably find what you're looking for if it, if it exists, of course. Gosh, I don't know if I've ever been so long since I've looked or looked at one. Right. Good so, question, though. We'll we'll find out. Yeah, so if Louie's in the chat, hopefully he'll, yeah. do, he'll do a little thing a, here. A roving... Uh, Somebody said no, it's too old. But with the right converter, yeah, you're gonna you may need be able a, to. I think you're gonna need a converter. How is the de dependability of the SNK MVS cabinets? So the Neo Geo MVS cabinets. What would you say the dependability or reliability? We used to have um, a couple of these out on route, Tim. Like actually in locations. Do you remember Mel Slug? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think about the reliability, dependability? Pretty dependable for the most yeah, part. Yeah, right? for for the most part. Um, 
I would definitely put some fans in there. I never liked the heat of right. them that much. A lot of them have of fans my, built some in. Some of them I've seen with fans. Right. Um, most of them, though, we hardly ever... I mean, same as any other cabinet, have a monitor go out or something, but for um, the most part, I will they, say, I will say they this, lasted. The sockets can be a little tricky when putting the games in. Remember, uh-huh. they have the little oh, cartridges? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you just need to make sure that you... Cl- just like your old NES cartridges, you want to make sure that you clean real good and that you pop them in those slots. Those slots can wear over time, Tim, mm-hmm. and, and stop working. And so, But for the most part, they were pretty reliable for us. We very rarely ever had issues with them. I mean, yeah, we had... Joysticks wearing out was we had the worst one, part. We uh, had one in an arcade for over a year. I don't know if we ever worked on that thing. Right, exactly. Just it worked the it. whole time. And then we sold it and it was still working. Yeah. So, I mean, Give me an idea. I think they're pretty reliable. Right, exactly. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, uh, TXJYT just gave us some money. Hey. Hey, 20 bucks. Wow, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. We always like donations, guy. Love the show. Any, uh, any way to do one every two weeks instead of every month. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you knew how much prep went in. <laughs> <laughs> a if lot of everybody crap. did that donation. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody in the chat wants to give what, what uh, TXJYT no. gave, then we'll do it for sure. I'm, I'm glad you like it that much. We look forward to it, but we actually do put a little... Uh, Jonathan uh, puts a <laughs> lot of work into the show and trying to do all the screens and everything. I think two weeks would probably press us a little for for time and quality. But I'm with you. Enough but, donations could motivate but, uh, that. Yeah, enough <laughs> so, donations. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Louis is on it, and he says it's original, not JAMA. So okay. it's got its own pinouts. Now, not to say, like we said, that there's not an adapter that you could use for if it. Anybody, oh, and Louis, look at him on cue. Put the adapter link in there. There you go. So there you I go. figured so you somebody could, had made one. So you could wire your cabinet JAMA, use the adapter, and then you'd be able to play the ele- elevator action in a JAMA cabinet. Bam. Problem solved. There Thank you. you. So, okay. Well, Thanks, Tim, Louis. I think we caught up with the live chat. Fine. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's go back to um, the So, questions. let's go back to the outline real quick. And the uh, first one we have here, Tim, is from Don. And he says, I have an original Galaga cocktail table that has a 60-in-1 game board installed using an adapter so the wiring harness is original. So, Tim, we are just talking about this right. with the elevator action. Same kind of thing. I wanted to convert the two-way joystick to a four-way joystick, so now I have two half four-way joysticks and new plates to accommodate the four-way joystick. I disassembled the control panel after watching your great video and see that the original joystick has four wires soldered to the contacts on the joystick. Do I need to modify or get a new wiring harness that will allow connecting the four-way joysticks? Thanks for any assistance you can provide. Don. And Tim, I should say that I've been in contact with Don. I've been talking to him. Okay. So he's, we've continued past this point. Oh, good. But I like this question so much, I left it on here. It's a great there, question. I, I really felt like it was a good question. A lot of people may not realize that Galaga has a two-way joystick. Right. And so there's only it four only wires goes, out there. There's left, left, left right, right, ground, ground. Right. <laughs> Those are the four wires up there. So Tim, what do I have to do in order to get a four-way joystick in there? Well, you're going to have to run additional wiring or go ahead and convert it to JAMA right. wiring, which would probably be my choice. Sure. And then wire up all four uh, movements. Because I don't think... There's probably some empty places on that Galaga There may harness. be that you could use. Right. I think there is. But at the same time, at this point, I would just rewire it for JAMA make that easier because it wasn't really designed what we're using it for here. I mean, you're using the adapter on the original wiring harness anyway. Right. And if you're going to play more games than just Galaga, you're going to need the four-way joystick. Right, but you are you're, you're you can jumper the grounds. Right. So you really only need to run two wires. Right. So I'll just leave that up to you. Do you want to just run two wires? And if you're using the adapter, you run it to wherever the adapter says. You right, can exactly. skip the Galaga side and just run right, it straight, straight to, to the, the other adapter. side. Right. So anyway, hope that helps you. Um, good questions though, because we're going to see more and more of this as we convert older games. And uh, of course, everybody's screaming, "Don't convert it! Get it to Galaga!" But you know, with the well, it sounds like it's already adapter, been converted a little with bit. With the adapter, I think that was that's one good way to do it. So. Sounds good. Well, Tim, let's go ahead and throw this up here real quick. And he says, yes, you will need to either modify the existing wiring or install a new wiring harness in order to use the four-way joystick in your Galaga cabinet. As you know, Galaga only uses a two-way joystick for left and right movements. And as such, 
only needed two control wires and two ground wires, like we talked about, Tim. There's nothing for up and down, right? Right. And this, Tim, is a, a picture of a newer style Galaga two-way joystick, if you guys are wondering. If you wanted to modify the existing wiring, you could run two more wires, one for player one up, player one down, from either the adapter or to the board itself to these additional directions on the joystick. You should be able to jumper off the existing ground wires for those connections, Tim. So the ground wires you could just use in a daisy chain, kind of like we do. So right. you could just daisy chain two more grounds off of the existing grounds that are there, but you're still going to have to run one wire for player one up, one wire for player one down, or like Tim mentioned, just rewire the whole thing jammer. Yeah. So those are kind of your options. And, the, there, and right? one of the reasons why I would say that is because that Galaga wiring has got to be pretty ancient by oh, now. Oh, absolutely. And starts they start wiring starts getting brittle and stuff. So at this point, you're not going to have a Galaga anymore. So I would go ahead and refresh because then once you do the wiring, it's going to last the life of probably that you own that game. So absolutely. that would be my recommendation. Of course, just running two wires not that hard to do. Uh, depending on your skill level, you might want to do that. We'll just leave that up to you. There's now, Tim, I will tell you just an update. We Don, I talked to him, and he did end up doing an entire harness. So okay. he ended up going with your recommendation. Oh, good. So Does that make you feel good? Hey, smart. <laughs> He's smart. smart guy. <laughs> Anybody who agrees with you yeah. is smart, right? Exactly. <laughs> I see how this goes. So, But, uh, Don, we want to thank you for your question. And like I said, I'll continue to be in contact with Don. And, Tim, he actually um, – he's actually – basically ripping out all the Galaga stuff and putting in brand new wiring harness, brand new power supply, everything like that. And Tim, considering he's doing a full conversion, it's probably for the best. Yes. So there you go. Okay, Tim, we got some more money. Hey. From Arn. Arn? Or Am. I can't see. Sorry, my, my, my eyes are terrible. I think it's Arn. A-R-N-E? It's A-R-N. A-R-N. You see my eyes, man. You can't. <laughs> but Arn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for donations. We love donations. Yes, right? we do. Thank there you. you. Go. So um, now Louis posted some more links there for um, for uh, about the elevator action. Yeah, so thank he's you, got Louis. several of those. So we want to thank him for doing that. It's great stuff there. So okay, I think we're caught up. Let us continue on, Tim. And I think this may be... Is this the last question? Nope, we still got a couple more. Um, this one is from Jason, though, Tim. And I found this one very interesting. Yeah, good question. So let's go ahead and go into that. Jason says, I have a Zaxxon cocktail slash tabletop arcade game that, when I purchased it, would power up but not go to the title screen. On the inside of the cabinet, there's a maintenance test button. When I push it, it goes through a series of tests and it was stating that it had a bad ROM. How hard is this to fix? What would a new chip run? I ask because my game has now been in the shop for two months. Wow. Okay. And the bill is up to $300. Okay. I feel like I'm being taken for a ride. Tim, he could buy an arcade one up. Yes. I just, I just realized that. I feel like I'm being <laughs> taken for a ride. can't play that, That's true. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like I'm being taken for a ride. Do you have a reason to be concerned with this shop? Do I have a reason to be concerned with this shop? I feel like the guy is trying to make the bill high so I won't come back for my game. So there you go, Tim. So we have Jason here. He's got a Zaxxon cocktail okay. table. He's, he sent it off for repair to like a repair shop. Okay. And now they want to charge him $300. It was saying it had a bad ROM. Okay. Okay, so those are the symptoms. What do you think is going on? Is is Jason, what should this repair cost? And is Jason right to worry about the $300 repair cost? Well, when the repair cost is now costing more than a replacement board... I would be a little bit concerned because Absolutely. he has a board issue. Right, exactly. Now, he asked how how hard is it to replace a ROM. It's relatively easy if it's socketed, and most of them are. Exactly. So, you use a chip puller or a tiny screwdriver. Have we ever showed a video on pulling a chip? Uh, inspecting an arcade board, Tim. I, we have a video on inspecting an arcade board you can check out, and it does, I believe, show how to pull a chip. Okay. I'm Not for sure. We may yeah, have to show We may it. need to do a new video on that. What yeah. do you guys think? We need to do a video on pulling chips. We could do a 64-pin or something. Sure. Okay. Anyway, it's not hard. It's real easy. I'm sure there are YouTube videos on it. But once you pull the chip out, the main thing is that when you get the replacement that you put it in the same direction. Chips are direction. In other words, you can't swap them and put them in upside down. Right. They always have a notch or something that tells you which way it goes. And sometimes on the board, it's etched in how that notch goes. So you'll know to put it in the right way. Absolutely. So it's not very hard. And uh, you can talk to HobbyRoms.com right. or and some they, of them. I would say the average one is 10 bucks or less. Uh, 15 20 for, I can't for remember. For one chip? Yeah. I, I mean, mean they, they charge a little bit more, but here's the thing. They've got all the equipment. You don't have to go get a ROM burner. You don't have to get that stuff. They take care of it all for you. I can't remember what he charges right. for a custom yeah, chip. 20 bucks or less, yeah, I would like think. That. Uh, somebody who's bought one recently might would want to chime in, but it's not really that hard. So here's what I would do. I would tell them, look, 
I can't, I don't want to pay anymore. I would just, at this point, I would stop the bleeding and get my game back. Absolutely. That's my now, opinion. Now, Paul does say that his Exxon also had a bad ROM chip, or bad um, RAM chip, okay? One chip, he says, should be less than $100 for a pair. I agree. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're talking about the chip itself, like Tim says, like 20 bucks maybe. But in the repair guy's uh, defense, we don't know that that was the only problem. Sure. I don't know what all he's had to fix. Maybe he repaired that and encountered another issue. Maybe the monitor needs some work and he went and kept it. I don't know, but it does seem really high for a ROM chip replacement. If that's the case, then I would get my game back. Because like I said, you could buy a working board for less than that and just put a new board in it. Exactly, and that's what we put here, Tim, on the outline. If the problem was just a bad ROM chip, then the repair would be pretty simple. Basically, just program a new chip and replace the bad one. And Tim, like Paul said, it actually tells you which chip which is chip? bad. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, I mean, it's not like it's a big issue. The problem is that there could be additional issues with the board, like you mentioned, Tim. There could be yeah. cracked solder joints. There could be bad chips, bad, bad socket chip, or bad chip sockets, excuse me. And Tim, like right. trying to replace... Burnt traces. Socket. This board could have been repaired a hundred times. Exactly. I don't know. Bad chip sockets are a bear to replace sometimes yeah. because they've got really tiny solder joints. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta take them all out. You gotta put a new socket in, and depending on how many of those you have to do, it can take a long time. Right. And so we're not going to necessarily say that it, it, you know, it's not that. I mean, there could have been additional repairs that he had to do in his yeah. defense. Okay. It seems high, but then again, we weren't working on. I've had to charge more than that before. I'm working on a game that you know. I, even my estimate would have said it was a lot less, and I got it in there. It was a lot more work. I hate having to make that call, but usually you can guesstimate that. If it was a board issue, I think we're getting really expensive for a repair. The fact that you actually have a local repair shop, though, I think is still kind of cool. Absolutely. I think it is, too. So, I mean... But maybe you could work something out. You know, everybody's got a, a deal. You know, if, if it's getting too high for you... Say, hey, man, look, I'll come and clean out your gutters and mow your grass up there if you'll knock it down to $200 or something. Uh, most people are pretty reasonable. If not, and he's just a jerk, and, uh, you know, it's funny. In the arcade business, everybody in the chat will probably agree. It's like you either meet these great people or you meet the real scum of the earth. That is very it's true. It's like there's... There's no in-between. <laughs> it's like the Dallas Cowboys. You either love them or, or you, you hate, hate them. them. <laughs> you don't kind of like them. It's like the Philadelphia Eagles. You just hate them. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody in Philadelphia loves them. But well, they are playing right now. Yeah. Tim. I believe we're, they're about to be playing. We're going to so. bring that up later in the in the after show. But what I'm saying is that really, if the guy is a nice guy, I'm sure he'll work with you. If he's not, get your game get out of there. Sounds we'll help good. You. And I'm going to finish up this real quick, Tim. It, it can take a lot of time to narrow down where these problems are, which can lead to additional repair cost. Okay. With that said, we found a working Zaxxon board for 200 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Working. Working. So if it was just a board, could have just replaced it for 200 bucks. Right. And anybody, you know, most board repair guys should be able to do that. You know, most board repair guys, I think, are with Paul. They would probably just fix it for like 100 bucks. I think. You know, I mean, because it doesn't seem if it's yeah, just you one just bad wrong. Yeah, send it off right. for, for repair. And he mentions El Dorado. We recommend El Dorado a lot. They do El Dorado. Be, there's a lot of people on our page that I don't think would charge anywhere near that to fix your board. Right, exactly. So, In fact, I can't imagine any of them that would. So there could be additional issues. We don't want to sell out this guy. like, And we really don't know all the facts. Just on what you presented, um, you know, we're going to say be cautious. If he's a good guy and wants to work something out, fine. If not, get the game and get out and cut your loss. Absolutely. So hopefully answers your question there, Jason. I got Jason. some stock like that. <laughs> you got to cut the lot. Gotta cut it and get out. So Jason, hopefully answers your question, and good luck getting your Zaxxon cocktail cabinet up and running. Hopefully you can get it back for cheaper than the three hundred dollars that he wants to charge you. So wow. Now Tim, we got a couple things here. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Kev Gret says Eagles. Everybody hates you when you're on top. You are correct, sir. Yeah. Sorry. It is what it we is. We hated you before you were on top. <laughs> That's right. We're Cowboys fans, yeah. right? Just so kidding. there you go. Um, no, I'm not. Now, Danny comes back Nobody and says, I'm you. getting ready to put an Area 51 cabinet together. I have none of the wiring. I was told I could use a jam harness on it, but I have to hook up the negative 5 volts. And that is correct. Yes. I believe that Area 51 is one of the games that uses negative 5 volts mm -hmm. for sound. For sound. So you will need to hook up a negative 5 volts line to that when you do your jam wiring. Not all games, Tim, require the negative 5 volts. No, most don't. Exactly. But that, I believe, is one that does. So I know the Lethal Enforcers does. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, I saw something else in here, too. Let me see. Um, is there any specific main cabinet manufacturer that you would recommend? 
any of you that you have had experience with. You know, um, Tim, uh, Rec we, Room Masters, maybe? I've heard of them. Have you heard of them? Yes. We don't have experience with any of them because... We, we like the Ultimark stuff, products. Right, yeah. But they Ultimark, don't build cabinets. Exactly. They don't build cabinets, but, um, but that's what we put whenever we build main cabinets. A lot of times we use Ultimark. Yeah. So, so I like their products. Right. But they don't build main cabinets. Um, Rec Room Masters, I believe, does, but I don't have any experience with them. I've seen them before, and I, I've heard of people who have had good experiences with them, but I don't know anybody who has. If there are people in the chat here, Tim, that have had experiences yeah, with some of the main manufacturers, please let us know. Um, you know, Tim, a lot of times I we build. I build my own. I was about to say, so, we build. Right, you know, so. I build my own, so I don't know. Right, exactly. So, I mean, but if you're looking for a manufacturer, there are several out there. And the best thing we can tell you is just get reviews online, maybe in some of the forums and stuff, uh, from other customers, see what they think about it, right? Right? Yes. So there you go. Now, Arn came back, Tim, after we mentioned him, says, Woo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, love your show, just discovered it. Thank oh. you for being here, Arn. Thank you for donating. We appreciate it. We're glad you like the show. We hope you join us the first Thursday of every month. Every month. So there you go. Not, okay. Not always at 530, but pretty close to 530. <laughs> That's right. Close to 530. Uh, sorry about the delay today, guys. Um, my wife is a little it. late getting home from work, but it happens sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, But we're still here, Tim. It was almost four of us on here. There you go. Exactly. Two yeah. kids. Two kids. That's right. Exactly. So... so. Okay, let's continue on here, Tim. Now, Tim, these are some fun questions. Apparently, the Headless Horseman has found our YouTube it's channel. It's getting close to Halloween already? I guess so. Okay. So he has found our YouTube channel, okay. Tim, and he left several questions, but I'm only going to pick three. Okay. Oh, more okay. than this. Okay. That's right, more than this, but I okay, have picked three. Okay, we'll take three. the top three. The top three. That's why I said some. Okay. Some questions. You it's like the David Letterman, the top five, or That's the right. top three. So these are the top three that the Headless Horseman left us. Uh, the first one says, nice video. Thanks. One question. I am on the Holland Computers website, and I only see an option for plexiglass and not glass. I don't see a glass top option anywhere. Did they get rid of the glass? And Tim, we're going to read these, sir, and then we'll okay. answer them all. Didn't you guys used to have intro music on your videos? Okay, we'll answer that one. And then I fixed the game. Then I played the game. What should I do next? Wow, we uh, are going in depth here, aren't uh, we? We are. Okay, so Tim, <laughs> let's take his first one here. He says um, he's on the Holland Computers website. So Tim, I assume he's talking about our video on um, assembling a cocktail cabinet. Yes. So we have a video. The kit. Exactly, on assembling a cocktail cabinet kit, which is sold by hollandcomputers.com. In that kit, Tim, it comes with plexiglass. Right, we okay. mentioned that. It is inside the kit. The plexiglass comes with the kit. You can't buy it without the plexiglass. Right, it, that's what it comes with. It comes with plexiglass and it comes with blue tea molding that's the way they package it right okay it is pre-packaged with plexiglass and blue tea molding if you want glass you have to buy the glass separately right and I you will still just, get the plexiglass yeah you're still going to get a piece of plexiglass right we still used it yes but we put the glass on the game exactly but we used the glass we just kept the plexi over in and life, so right? you want to go ahead and show we you you got a link there is a link that he can go to and there or email them directly but the link is right there. Right. So we actually have it below, too, in the in the um, comments for the video, so you can see that. But the Holland Computers Cocktail Kit comes with a plexiglass top. This cannot be removed from the order. We recommend ordering the glass top separately. And, Tim, we have the link here, and we also have it below in the um, in the comments area, in the notes area for the video. You guys can see it down there. Uh, Tim, we usually don't have intro music. But this inspired me, and on the last video, we put intro music on Okay. There. So mm -hmm. now we have intro music, <laughs> so there you go. So, um, Is it 8-bit? Uh, it's our usual theme. It's the okay. same theme that same comes theme. in for the live shows. So um, we put that same music on the front because we own that. Okay. So because we own it, we have done that. Now, Tim, I think we're going to need some help from the live chat on the last question. And, and here, I'm going to scroll it back. I fixed the game. Then I played the game. Now what? What should I do next? And so, Tim, my ideas were clean the game. Okay. Enjoy the game. Yes. Yeah. Sell the game. Maybe. Yeah. Invite others over to play the game. That sounds like a good one. There you go. But we need some more suggestions. Yeah, so that's the poll tonight. Once you fix the game, you play the game, then what's next? Exactly. So for those who don't know, mm -hmm. fix the game, play the game is our motto. Right. That's what we do here at Arcade Repair Tips. We fix games, we play games. What do you do after you play a game? You know, the funniest thing was when we did our first seminar, and at the end we go, when you fix a game, the whole crowd went, you, you play, play the, the game. game. Right, exactly. Um, I guess everybody remembers that <laughs> from the video. It's easy we, to remember. We said that a long time ago. We wanted a catchphrase. So now we need to know, when you fix the game, you play the game, then what do you do? Exactly. So now, Tim, here's some suggestions. We okay. Play the game again. Play it again. Play it again. Play it again, Sam. 
get another broken game. Okay, that's right. <laughs> so they Move go. on to the next game. Right. That, um, Super Goya says, play the game again. Paul Jure says, get another broken game. Jay says, get the next game. Yep, get there the you go. Game. Get the next uh, game. TXJYT. Um, let's see. Super Goya again. Build or fix another game. Right. There you go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Louis, <laughs> Louis, our uh, Facebook moderator and a YouTube live chat moderator here, says, um, please don't move the game. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch it. Don't touch the game. Maybe that's a good way to say it. Um, something like that. I like don't move the game. Yeah, so don't move the Don't game. touch it again. There you go. Um, and uh, T- uh, Tex uh, JYT says, um, add to the collection. There you yep. go. So add to the collection. So uh, anything else? I- I'm curious what else you guys have. Um, while we're waiting on that, Tim, we have Joe here. He says, can you talk about the RetroPie and what it can do for building an arcade machine? And are there different variations? Um, so the RetroPie, I think, um, Tim, I'm not sure. Basically, I know it's something... Like preloaded? I think it's... Um, RetroPie is also a build for the Raspberry Pi that allows you to play retro games. Okay. But there's also different adapters that you can put the Raspberry Pi on that will allow you to use it like in a jamming cabinet, for instance. Okay. Or will give you hookups and things like that, like the RPiCade and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You can actually put the Raspberry Pi on, will give you like controller inputs, video outputs, stuff like that. Okay. And so there's a lot of different options for Raspberry Pis. Tim, unfortunately, I haven't done enough research on all these to know. But there are retro pie builds out there that you can yeah. get. They're already pre-built. And basically all you have to do is add the ROMs to them. Okay, so it's just a matter. And there are different variations. I'm not sure which variations are the best. There are other websites that can you tell know, you that. You know what would be great is if you could buy a small cabinet for like $300 and then you can mod it with something like that. Oh, that would be fantastic. If somebody sold something like that, that would be excellent. There you go. So, uh, I, have, I'm, I believe Just you saying. are correct. I believe you are correct. <clears throat> That's so there you go. Might be an interesting video. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, so there we go. So yeah, we don't know a whole lot about RetroPie, but it is an option. And like I said, they have different builds of the RetroPie. And basically, Tim, all it is is a front end with an emulate with emulators. Yes. That's all it is. And so a lot of those you just add the ROMs to and you're good to go. It's, it's a very quick process. Uh, depending on what controllers you want to use and things like that. So there you go. Um, oh, Jason says, make arcades great again. Yeah. There you go. Just like your presidential slogan, Tim. There you go. So, Okay, Tim. Well, that does it for the questions for this ah, episode. And tech so, tip time. That's right. It is time for Tim's tech tip. Now, uh, Tim, I'm going to go ahead and throw it up here, but why don't you tell us a little bit? Now, we should mention that um, we just put up a new post and video on right. methods for stripping a wire. Everybody's seen the video, I hope, by now. Yeah, if you haven't, you guys can go check it out. Um, we've discuss- And in that video, Tim, we discuss manual and automatic strippers. Wire strippers. Yes. Wire strippers. Wire strippers. So, should be. But. My wife might be watching. We did not have strippers. There you go. Um, one thing that I... What do you guys think about the quality? I want to give Johnson a pat on the back of our latest video. New equipment. Yeah, I was um, uh, that's some high def. Yeah, that's really high that's, def. Yeah, now now in super high def. <laughs> that's right, not 4K though. It's still yeah. 720p. Uh, but we upgrade our camera, and I think Tim looks better than ever in uh, the with the new camera, and I think you look nice. I think I need to go back to low def. I didn't like that. <laughs> so. I think you could see every uh, gray hair and wrinkle on my head. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you guys haven't seen the video yet, we we're, we're wanting to try to do some things that. Um, you know, because you don't know until everybody thinks, oh, well, I knew that or I knew that. And then, you know, I used these older style strippers for years. Right. And then I saw somebody use a pair of clicks. And I'm like, what'd you do? What? Hey, <laughs> show me that. Honestly, it uh, probably was several years ago, but wasn't that many years ago. And uh, so we're going to talk about the tools of the trade some. And so, if you uh, want to go ahead and bring yeah, up the slide. Yeah, i the outline here. In that video, Tim, that we skipped a pair of strippers that we have used in the past, why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Well, um, the ones on the left, as you can see, are the the typical manual wire strippers. Probably everybody has a pair like those. And then that first one on the right, the kind of, uh, was that teal and yellow col- color ones? Those are kind of the Harbor Freight ones. They call click strippers. They're clicks, and we talked about how those wear out. The one in the middle is the Klein strippers that I use. Well, like, those are actually the vice grip. Vice, vice grip. grip um, auto, uh, what they call those? Self-adjusting. So. Yes, yeah, self-adjusting. Those are the ones I use on a daily basis. But we do not, after we shot the video, you're right. We went back and looked at, we also have the last pair 
And uh, what brand are these, John? These are the these are a generic version, but the Klein Tools Catapult is the name brand version of this tool. And Tim, I like to call these um, precision gauge wire strippers. Okay, these okay. are this is like the off brand. These are like the Caterpillar. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so what we have here, are, this is the precision gauge wire strippers. And Tim, I've got some close ups here so people can see them. Um, these are automatic wire strippers. Yeah. Right. It's got all the different sizes on the side. Right of the size of wire, so you got to make sure that you get it in the right place because if you put it on the end, it won't do anything. Right, and Tim, that is um, your self-adjusting wire strippers are are auto automatic. It yeah, they automatically size. adjust. But this is kind of cool because we can go ahead and, and demonstrate. Yeah, I want to see your demonstration here. Okay, everybody, here is the set. Y'all get a good look at those. That's the pair right there. Here's a wire. <laughs> Here's a and, wire. Uh, Can just, you face uh, them? I think, I, try the last one. I think, I can't remember which one it is. Here we go. Okay. That fast. There it is. We're stripped. You guys can get a good look at that. See how fast and easy that is? And um, you, you got to show think, the people again? Yeah. We'll uh, do, uh, do the other end? You know, right. No, here's what something's cool about these, John. Oh, okay. What if I want to do the middle? Oh, yeah. What if I just wanted to strip some off in the middle? And I just wanted to cut right there. I didn't want this part stripped. See that? I just took a hunk out of the middle. Try doing that with the first pair of strippers, right? Sure, exactly. So I think that's kind of cool. Again, on an end, we just put it in there. Find the end. And however long I want to strip it is what I leave coming out of the edge like that. Because it's going to cut from way back. See, that's a very long... Uh, strand right there so if i wanted to tie a wire sometimes i like to strip it deep like that so i can really twist in and stuff like that anyway just a really quick tool and how much are these cost sean i think they're 20 dollars. yeah they're a little bit more expensive but guys if you're wrestling and has think about wiring up that jamma cabinet if it doesn't come with quick disconnects and you have to strip 50 something wires or something like that it's just so much faster. Click, go, click, go, click, go, click. I'm, I can do uh, that whole harness in a minute. Right. Uh, versus the old school way. So if you haven't got a pair of these yet, I hope we put a link in the show notes or whatever uh, later. But you can also check our last video. We go into a little bit more detail. But we didn't show this pair. So I wanted to offer that as a tech tip. Uh, this week. The Precision Gauge. Is Precision, really Precision Gauge. Gauge wire strippers. And the Klein Tools Catapult's the name brand, Tim. That's the generic brand. Um, but, you know, before the um, the self-adjusting ones, we use these quite a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, this was this was a really good pair. So, um, there you go. They, they do last forever. So, that extra extra 10 bucks more than the other pair, to me, are just quite worth it. There you go. So, uh, I hope everybody got a lot out of Tim's tech tip there. Tim, anything else you have to say about those strippers? Or um... No, if uh, you have uh, any experience with that or you do a lot of it or you plan on it, you might want to upgrade what's in your toolbox. And we may do some more videos like that to show tools how we've changed over the years. The more that we work on stuff, and we, I'm, you know, always about working smarter, not harder. Absolutely. And uh, that's definitely a way to work smarter and takes a little less time. Okay, well, there you go. Well, Tim, thank you for your tech tip this month. And make sure you also check out our new video, Tim, on methods of stripping a wire. Right, and if you have an idea for a tech tip that you would like to see something that we can demonstrate quickly or talk about quickly, please send it to me. Sounds good. So, well, Tim, I think that does it for the tech tip. So let's move on to the discussion section here, Tim. And this was the um, article that got the most views on our Facebook page this month okay. and Twitter feeds. So let's go ahead and show that. And Tim, the uh, name of the article was In Defense of ROMs, A Solution to Dying Games and Broken Copyright Law. And Tim, let, I thought this was an interesting article because it really kind of broke down why this guy thought that ROMs were a good thing. Right. Whereas a lot of us see ROMs as piracy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about that for a sec. He said um, in this Kotaku article, the author, author said uh, emulation is absolutely vital to the president preservation of gaming history a world without roms would be a bleak one indeed especially considering the nature of video games as a medium copyright was supposed to balance the benefits to the creator and the public but what's happened since the 1790 law has been the virtual death of public domain through slow copyright creep so i mean one of the arguments he makes here tim is that 
copyright essentially now is perpetual. It used to be that things would move into the public domain after 75 years or whatever. Right. And now it seems like companies have been able to extend that copyright longer and longer and longer. So nothing ever ends up in the public domain. And therefore, it's never legal to really archive it. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So I think that those are all really good, you know, I guess, what's the word, positions for this particular issue. Okay. But Tim, I thought... Why don't we tackle it? Okay. Okay, so there you go. So, um, oh, somebody says, uh, YouTube Punk says, uh, just got here. Can you start over? <laughs> oh, man. You missed so much. Um, rewind. There you go. So there you go. Can you do it? <laughs> Whatever you want to do. I'll talk there. backwards. That's right. Like exactly. back mask us. No, whatever. But um, so anyway, guys, we're to the arcade debate segment for this episode. And Tim, here we go. Is the use of emulation in ROM files more about pirating copyrighted material or preserving history? So, Tim, piracy or preservation? Uh, what is emulation in ROMs more about? And so that is where we will begin tonight's debate. Well, since, and, we're, and we're here. Since I'm the oldest, I'm going to go with the preservation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. So we're going to reset here for everybody. So, guys... Thank you for joining us tonight for the Arcade Debate segment. And Tim, in this segment tonight, we're going to be talking about emulators and ROMs. Are they piracy or are they preservation? Are they a little bit of both? So you and me, what do you think about ROMs and emulation? Now, Tim, obviously this is a big subject because we have a lot of people here who make MAME cabinets and other things like that. And so with that in mind, what is your position? Do you think it's more of privacy or, or excuse me, piracy or preservation? What is the main purpose of emulation and arcade ROMs. I think that any game that you can't buy a board for any longer falls in the preservation area. Okay. And that's how I'm going to uh, debate tonight and take that stance that I think they should be free, should be allowed out there. Um, guys use them to fix boards with, uh, those type of things. And I, I think that it's good to preserve and keep the history and keep the games alive that way. Well, Tim, I believe that this is more of pri piracy, that people are actually pirating games and they are not giving the copyright holders the money that they deserve for developing, producing these games. And so I will let you go first, Tim. Give me your best argument as to why arcade ROMs and emulators are preservation. Well, like I said, if I'm having a problem with, uh, we had an elevator action uh question tonight. If I want to get that board fixed, I can't send it in to the manufacturer. I have to send it in to one of our board repair guys who uses the ROMs in order to fix that a lot. So I think for that standpoint, it is necessary, not just a, a right, although I believe it's a right. Let's take this for instance, Sean. If I go down to the Chevrolet place and I ask the Chevrolet, I go up to the Chevrolet dealership here in town, I say, I want a hood ornament for a 1957 Chevy. What are they going to say? Well, here's the deal. Though. They're going to say, we no longer have one. Go to eBay. Go somewhere else. And I think if you're not producing it anymore, then why worry about it? You're not making, you're not losing money because you're not selling anything. So, what say you? Well, here's the deal, Tim. I agree with your repair argument to a certain extent, but I think the majority of people who are using emulators and ROMs are using them in pirating fashions for games, Tim, that are readily available and out there in public already. So, I mean, take a Nintendo, for example. I mean, they just shut down a lot of different websites for having their ROMs and hosting their files. And the reason why is because they're still making money off those. And Tim, they made that investment in that game. They paid developers to develop the game. They paid, pub they paid um, you know, people to promote the game. They have been using the game for years. And shouldn't they get money for the use of that game going forward. I mean, that's my point. These companies, okay, are still using these properties. Now, Tim, I understand the argument if you're gonna say, well, they no longer produce that board, or like I said, for repair things, but I think the vast majority of people who are using ROMs and emulators are using them and they're basically pirating the stuff that is available, and that's the thing that really gets me. These companies should be getting a cut of that. Okay, but if I'm using it for my own personal benefit, in other words, if I like a song on the radio and I hit record on my old tape recorder, which I still have, and I push record and I'm recording that song to listen to later, or I rip that song, but it's for my use, I'm not making money off of it, I'm not selling a CD, I'm not doing anything with it, I'm building and for my own enjoyment, 
unless you're offering that. Now, I understand some of Nintendo's roles because of the NES Classic and things like that. What about all those games they're not producing anymore? Well, and I, I, like I said, I see your point there, but the thing is, is that most of these companies, the people who own these ROMs are still in business. I mean, Activision is still in business, Tim, and still owns the rights to a lot of those Atari games. Shouldn't they be getting residual money for those games? And Tim, the thing about it is, if these companies get that money, don't you think they're going to put it into making no, newer games? I mean, that's what if they If they do. want the money, then why don't they burn the ROMs on a CD and sell it to us? Because they want to give it to you in a fashion where it can't be pirated. Pirated, where they can make money off of it. Okay, right, you I mean, can exactly. make, they, they can want to make, make money. money. The problem with like your tape, the tape recorder argument, Tim, is that when you record something off the radio, the quality degrades. The thing about ROM files, Tim, is it's the game. It's the actual game. You can, I mean, it's the exact game as you remember it. It's a digital copy. It is, it is arcade perfect if it's an arcade game. And so, in other words, that whatever manufacturer owns the right to that game, they're no longer getting money from that game. And that hurts publishers. And Tim, we don't want these game publishers going out of business, do we? Then sell it to me. <laughs> if, you want to, if you want to make money, sell it to me and we will buy it. Guys will pay money, but if it's not available, you can't do it. So a lot of these games would already be forgotten. There's games we played in Maine that we didn't even play before, we never heard of. A lot of them would be gone and forgotten and it, uh, collecting dust somewhere had it not been for somebody saving the ROM images and then sharing those. We, we didn't pay for them. You know, it's, it's, uh, when it's, I think it is public domain to an extent, especially after so many years. And I'm not sure how the copyright laws all work on that, but it would just seem like after so many years that you haven't produced anything, you haven't made anything, you haven't uh, sold anything, that some of that should be released to the public. Well, here's what I'm going to say to you, Tim. If you don't like the law, change the law. Because the way the law works right now is that the copyright is pretty much perpetual going forward. It never enters the public domain. And as long as that's the case, as long as the company is still in business, Tim, shouldn't they still get residual money from the sale of that game? And if people are playing emulators and ROMs, they're not getting that money. Yeah, well, I see what you... And then we don't want to break the law, Jonathan. So... Let's write our congressman today. I was about to say, get with to... your senator and tell them that you want stuff to enter the public domain faster. If that's what you like, change the law. We're not sure who's going to win the Senate here in Texas yet. So whoever the new senator is or the keeps the seat, we're going to write them. And you're going but... to vote for the guy who supports limited copyright law and public <laughs> domain transfer, right? Right. There I you don't go. care what how what what your other views. Are. I just want to know how you feel about this one. There you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, if that is that could be a tent pole issue for you, Tim. I you think never so. know. Somebody could win a house, uh, a house on the uh, on in the Senate, Tim, based on just that platform. You never know. Unless they are for shorter DMV lines, and that trumps everything for me. <laughs> there you go. That is your platform, right? That's my platform. So there you go. Well, Tim, I still think. And we'll close it up here. I'll let you make your final argument, Tim. But I do think that as long as the companies exist that made these games, they should continue to get money from the sale of the games. I, even if I don't like it, that is the law as it's written today. If you don't like the law, get the law changed. That is my final position. What's yours? My final position is, is that if it's not for sale, then what do you care? Because you really need either need to sell it or make some system that uses it or let us play the games. It's no skin off your nose either way. If you want to build something like the Nintendo system, look how they sold like hotcakes. Even though we had the ROMs, we still bought it. Because we do want to support your company. But we are going to lose a lot of rare games. A lot of things are going to go the wayside if these are not allowed to continue. And But by now, there's so many of them out there. You're not be able to stop it by now. Anyway, I think it's a little too late. This argument should have came up years ago. But, Tim, the reason it's being brought up now is because Nintendo is actually going after these ROM sites. Finally, you could say. I mean, right. they could have been going after them this whole time, and I'm with you. They should have been doing that. But now that they're going after them, I think it shows you that the legality of these things is highly questionable. And that's what it really comes down to. But, Tim, what do you say? All those viewers out there, what do you guys say? What do you think? Do you think that arcade emulation and ROMs is more about piracy or is it more about preservation? Uh, please let us know and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And thank you for joining us for the arcade debate segment tonight. And if you're watching this or Twitter or Facebook, make sure that you uh, reply to this and let us know your thoughts. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Tim. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, um, well, should we get out of God? Gotta get out of the box. <laughs> I always feel so cramped in that box. God, yeah, it's like. kind of 
crowd in me. Hey, we should say that uh, if you're if you're wanting to watch the NFL game, it's raining right now, so there's no reason to turn it on. You guys can watch right here. Oh, it's so, late. Yeah, you don't have to watch it. Watch us. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're not missing any NFL action, right? Right. So there we go. Well, Tim, let's go we'll to both. the to the live chat here. Okay, what's this. in the live chat? Now, YouTube Punk donated. He says, bring on the arcade repair tips t-shirts. Oh, wow. Uh, t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> we're not a t-shirt company, right? Right. I, we'll think about it. Okay, I got a few ideas. There you go. <laughs> um, Let's see, Super Goya says, The issue is sometimes there's no legal alternatives to using ROMs, especially with Nintendo now that the virtual console is dead and there's no possible way to play them. Probably. That's, okay, so that's kind of like your argument. Point. Exactly. Your, I agree with Tim. Right. I mean, everybody agrees with you. Well, it's like, like I said, if I go down and the guy tells me I can't get a hood ornament, then I can go home and make one. Well, sure. Because, and then when they get, sue how me, else you gonna get it, right? right, how else am I going to get it? I can go make it because you don't sell it. Exactly. So, but Nintendo, I think, really does have some gripe, and I don't blame them. If I was a business owner, I would own Nintendo, I'd be like, I could see. Cause, right. Because, you know, we've been playing Donkey Kong in Maine now for 20 years. <laughs> that is true. And, I mean, just ask Billy Mitchell. Right. Anyway, um, let's continue <laughs> on there. So, uh, YouTube, Punk, <laughs> YouTube Punk says... My old tape recorder that I still have. I believe you said that, yes. Tim. My old tape recorder that I still have. Yes? Yes. Yes. There still you have go. one. Okay. Um, let's see. Jason says, horse buggy whips are not proprietary, too. Uh, much time has passed. We just want to keep these buggies running. <laughs> there, you yeah, go. there you go. So, so good um, analogy. Arn says, uh, let's, oh, he had some, that's different. Um, Super Goya says, honestly, I think companies should make a legal ROM site and sell their ROMs so there would be no piracy. And Tim, yeah. if you look what happened to the music industry with sell iTunes. Sell them by game. Right. That's what I'm saying. If you look at what happened to the music industry with iTunes, yeah. I'd love to see something like that happen with the ROM industry. So companies, figure it out. Okay. Yes, yeah, um, for sure. Exactly. Um, let's see what else we have here. Detroit. Wouldn't that be cool to go and just download the ROMs that you want to play games? I want that game, that game. I'll, I'll exactly. pay 99 cents or and I'll get the, 10 games the this month. And companies then... can set their prices on, yeah. whatever their prices are. Right. So um, Detroit Retro Gamer DRG uh, 313 says, Amen. ROMs are so awesome for historical purposes. These games would be full of dust on the shelf. And YouTube Punk says, do you still get residuals from a PC you repaired five years ago? Well, it's different for hardware, you know? I mean, software can still be enjoyed in its original format years later. Hardware can't, Tim. Once hardware is decrepit, it's decrepit, right? Right. I mean, it is what it is. So, viva la ROMs. There you go. Okay. So everybody's <laughs> with you. Um, good luck to anyone making decent money pirating games. It's 150 cent for people's enjoyment and cultural game. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, um, rim shot on my Billy Mitchell burn. There okay. you go. Everybody <laughs> like my Billy Mitchell burn. There you go. Um, so... Uh, there, there you go. So um, I we think didn't, that's all. We didn't write that in the script. No, we, we didn't. But um, it, it worked really one. well. Thank you. Thank you. Off the cuff. Uh, a plus one to Jonathan on that. There one. you go. So I, I, I'm glad that I got some. And I guys, got at least one point. In and there. guys, we will be, we'll be honest. When we debate, we're just picking a side. Exactly. Doesn't necessarily mean that Jonathan feels that way or I'm strongly this way. We're having fun with it. You guys are probably understand that, but exactly. it must be said. Exactly. It's always good to take two sides of the argument. Yeah. So what about on our Facebook page? What did people say? Yeah, so these were some of the replies to the original article from Kotaku about um, the defense of ROMs. Yeah, okay. For preservation. Chris says, no reason they can't go to an iTunes-type model for a few cents so you can download or get a copy of a ROM. I'm sure plenty will pay. Chad said, problem is that with a lot of older games, companies don't seem to know or care that they own the license for a game, so it dies. And so mm -hmm. that's something that's very... Very particular. So, Brendan says, if the game no longer is making money for the copyright holder and the ROMs are not being used to make money, I guess he says, it's okay. I use ROM images to burn new ROMs to repair and bring games back from the dead. I blame the NES... SNES classic clone sellers because there's that been did, a lot of clones to that did probably hurt it a lot right I agree Raymond says I do a lot of board repairs and make use of the main ROM dumps in doing those repairs I have most of what I need except for CHD files and Tim I think a lot of the people who repair stuff on our on our you know repair mm -hmm. boards that's one of the things they always said was that um, for repair purposes and I think that should be a a um, exemption. Exemption. Okay. That should be an exemption in the law if you're using if you the wrong image. The board, if you own the board, you right. have a copy of the board, and a chip goes bad, you should be able to legally burn another version of that chip and put it on your board. Exactly. Okay, that's fair use. And I, I think somebody even said that down here. I use ROM site. Uh, this is Travis. I use the ROM sites for repair purposes. When I need an image for one EEPROM to fix a board, I download the ROM set for the game. I call it fair use. I think that's very fair use. Um, another Jonathan says, it's always been an area that is... Definitely illegal, but impossible to enforce. I have no interest in violating copyright laws, but in some cases, there are simply no reasonable alternatives. Well, 
John, I just don't want to end up in jail one day next to this guy that just murdered somebody. He asked me what I did, and I said I burned some raw images. <laughs> there you go. You know, I was like, I don't want to be that guy. There you go. Well, Tim, hopefully you won't. Be. Okay, I'll maybe. try to keep you out of jail. Okay. So there you go. So, um, Tim, that pretty much wraps up that. But if you guys have anything else to discuss about that, please leave it in the live chat. We'd be happy to discuss that further. Uh, Tim, let's go to the live chat real quick. Um, now, Danny also said, I would say preservation because I have a Smash TV arcade that is running from downloaded ROMs. And so maybe, mm -hmm. you know, again, a board repair, I understand. Paul says, guys, want to see if you come to the same answer. I was working in a barcade. A burger time had a squiggle on the right side of... The uh, on the right side, out of sync, replaced with a K7000 rebuild, refurb monitor, but still has, but still the same thing. So it's still out of sync. So this is Paul. He says he tried the K7000, uh, the original one in there had a squiggly line on the okay. side. Okay. Puts another chassis in, same thing. Okay. Whole different monitor. Yes. Whole still different getting chassis. A, just getting a squiggly. Well, you could have a grounding issue. Right. That could cause that. Right. So could I, be, would, I mean, it could technically be a board video issue. It could be. I mean, I, I could see Video RAM doing that. Does it change if you shift the shift the game? Does it change? You know, is it, could it be? <laughs> could it be some type of um, interference? Interference. Uh, possibility there. I would really look into the ground grounds of your game. Make sure that your plug is grounded. Make sure that your ground your chassis is grounded all the way. To Very the, possible. To the floor. It's a board issue. It Very could be possible. With, with you got two different monitors in it and you're still getting the squiggle. Right. So, I mean, it could be the video, I mean, it could be a video RAM type thing. I could mean, be. I've seen stuff like that with uh, translation. You know, it's like a video RAM goes bad and so part of the screen just doesn't work right. I've seen that before. So, but I mean, outside of that, Tim, I don't know what else would cause that because it doesn't seem at this point like it's a monitor issue, right? Doesn't sound like it. So, I mean, I think for the most part, we're looking at a non monitor issue past that point. Right. So. I would be surprised, though, when you replace that monitor that, that happened, I would have been like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would have shocked me even. I would have been surprised. There you go. So, YouTube Punk says that was good. I guess he's talking about the debate segment. Okay. Good. Um, let's see. Danny says, a lot cheaper than buying a whole board, burning a ROM, I guess. For sure. Yes, absolutely. And um, YouTube Punk says, what you what you in for? ROM burner. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. So, uh, we'll continue on on that note. Now, Tim, let's go on with the discussion section here. This one, Tim, was very interesting because it has the word Chuck E. Cheese in it. Yes, it does. So, it says, two-bit circus is like a cutting-edge Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. Brent Bushnell, son of Nolan Bushnell. That sounds Atari like... co-founder, Tim, that, and Chuck E. Cheese co-founder. Correct. Okay. Is opening a new entertainment experience called Two-Bit Circus that's described as a mix of video games, virtual reality, neon lights, and theme park fun. Most games designed to play in groups... Almost everything is for at least two players, sometimes five, ten, or even a hundred, Tim. So very wow. multiplayer, right? One versus a hundred. There you go. Through it, though admission is free, he said games will cost one to three dollars a piece to play, and attraction games, Tim, as he calls them, can cost up to twenty-five dollars a piece to play. So, Tim, my question wow. to you, how do you think Two Bit Circus is going to do? Well, I, I guess it would depend on the demographics. It wouldn't do good in our town. No, I don't think so. I think it's too expensive. Right. But uh, maybe in a bigger metropolitan area, it could actually do. And I saw the pictures. It, it seemed interesting. And the link is below if you guys want to check it out. Um, it's on the CNET website. And it, I tell you, some of the games are really cool. It has like a big projector screen, Tim. And then like all these balloons pop fall down. You can throw things at the balloons to pop them and stuff like that. I mean, there's some cool little concepts there. Definitely very interactive. All right. So very interactive games with a lot of multiplayer I think it would be Almost better to charge a admission price and let the games be cheaper. Yeah, maybe. In my opinion. Maybe. I don't know. It seems a little high. Right, but I think he also has food and stuff like that, okay. too. So, I mean, he's making money on the food and he's making money on the games, too, right? So, you could just sit around, eat some food, and then play a game every so often or whatever. Yeah, what did the people on Facebook have to you say? You know, we didn't get a lot of feedback about that, but I, I just saw it was interesting. And I thought, especially with uh, Brent Bushnell, obviously, yeah. and everything. That's kind of cool that he's um, taking up the family biz. There you <laughs> go. So, it's a little bit different. Maybe a newer style arcade. There are arcade games there, though, Tim. Okay. So, you can play traditional arcade games there as well. And Tim, I, I we saw this article, Tim, and I don't know if you've seen this game, but I, I just think it is it. it is one of it has to be one of the most fun VR experiences ever. It's called Beat Saber. Is okay, that Jar and, Jar Binks? Um, no, not Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> um, like um, but it kind of looks like it. I think it's just a girl with a helmet on. But they're coming out, Tim, with a Beat Saber arcade machine. Okay. Okay. Um, this is an arcade version of the VR game Beat Saber has been announced, and it will be released very soon. The game itself is basically a cross between a lightsaber battle and a rhythm game. Okay. The game will be self-operable which means that players will not need the assistance of an operator to play it. 
so basically you hold these two little wands, okay, and you put the helmet on, and then these little uh, bricks come at you at different, you know, from different places, and you slice through them to oh, the beat. I would definitely play it. Oh, yeah, it's Sounds cool. Fun. I mean, it's like, like I said, it's like Star Wars meets like DDR. Okay. Okay, that's mm-hmm. kind of the, the thing. But I think the fact that they're Me making too. an arcade game out of this, and it's non op, like non-operator required. So, like, okay. basically you can just put it in your Chuck E. Cheese, just like you do every other game. Right. I think that's pretty cool. I'll be replacing them lightsabers every week. Well, they're just the little, they're just little sticks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I mean, I mean, kind of like, um, just like a little stick controller. I right? just yeah. should say, and it probably even we had a ping pong like that. Did you virtual ping pong? All the don't time. Don't want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's a traumatic experience. At Chuck E. Cheese, that would become. I'm going to hit my brother on the head. Oh, I understand. So, but Tim, this may be for more like Dave and Buster's Maybe. type locations. I, I can see that doing really well. Family and, entertainment or in, centers. Uh, no uh, main event. In the Bushnell place. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, But um, now, Tim, it's first going to be over in Asia where they're going to be debuting this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be coming here pretty soon if it does well. Pretty cool game. Yeah, what absolutely. do you guys think about it? Show the yeah. slide here, So John. I'll show it again if you guys... Oh, I showed it once. But okay. Beat Saber, if, you, if you've played it, let us know, and um, you know we'll go from there. So, But anyway, uh, there you go. I still say she looks like Jar Jar Binks. A little bit. I definitely see the similarities. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, um, Tim, well, I think... Are we... I think we're, we're about done. there. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we are ready to wrap up, guys. So we're going to go ahead and throw up all of our information real quick here. Just a reminder, Tim, we want your arcade related videos. If you want some free advertising for your YouTube channel, we're looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade related topics. Send a link of your video to questions at arcadepairtips.com and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Make sure to put in a plug for your channel so people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. And Tim, we haven't had any submissions in a while, but I know we have some new viewers tonight. So if you're watching right. for the first time, you have a nice uh, YouTube channel and you want some free promotion for your channel, uh, send us uh, one of your videos you'd like us to feature. As long as it's arcade related, we'd love to take a look at it. And if we like it, we'll feature it here on our live Maybe show. Maybe you've never shot a video before and you thought about it. Maybe Absolutely. you could burn a ROM and show people how it's done or there something. So just some ideas, guys. Uh, we want to see what you can do and what you're working on. Just take a short video and send it to us. We'd be glad to promote you. Absolutely. So there you go. Well, Tim, let's go ahead and get to the contact information real quick. Okay, first we have our general email address, Tim, which we just mentioned, questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. If you put live show in the subject, you will get it mentioned here on the show. Again, that's questions at arcaderepairtips.com. And Tim, all the questions we talked about tonight... Uh, pretty much came in that way, except for the one that we had as a comment on the previous live show. And Tim, that came in through our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. And any comments, of course, Tim, from the last live show will be put into the next live show. So if you have a question, you can leave it there and we will get to it there as well. But Tim, you'll notice that big red lettering there. Stay tuned. New post and video coming this month. Yes. I think there's a new post and video coming this month. I believe there is. Okay, I'm just based on that. I'm not for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, but um, yes, there is a new post and video coming this month. Tim, we've already shot most of it, but we will be shooting additional footage this Saturday. Yes. Okay, um, which, and we're not going to tell you what it is, but it's going to be really fun. I we think, can't so. hint or nothing. It's, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool. Yeah, it, it's, no, no hints. We can't even tell them if we're going to use something I've never used, a tool I've never used before? You can say that. Okay. <laughs> so, you're going to use a tool you've never used before. It's a new invention. A new invention. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. going to radically change arcade repair. Yeah. Now, uh, Paul, real quick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back here. Okay. He says, I'm leaning towards board issue. Okay. And I think that's the way I'd be leaning, too, on the squiggly line with yeah. the burger time. Um, like I said, video RAM, uh-huh. probably very common. Uh, video ROM. I'm not familiar enough with a Burger Time board to know that board as well as I do like Pac-Man or anything. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I would probably lean towards board issue as well. I think so. So there you go. And maybe tweaking the power supply could help. I mean, we've seen that before. Yeah, low definitely voltages need to can check cause, the voltage. Yeah, let's say low voltage ground. can cause weird things. So, I mean, it may be worth uh, checking that out as well. Okay, so anyway, new post and video coming this month. Yes. Stay tuned. New tool that Tim's never used before. Yes. Yes, there we go. Okay, podcast, guys. A lot of you guys who are tuning in for the first time may not know we have an audio podcast. It's called the Question and Answer Podcast. And you can reach Eric and Rusty, who host that podcast, at podcast at arcaderepairtips.com. And we highly recommend you subscribe to their podcast at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com and stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com. Yeah, they get all the hard questions because yeah. they're really good. <laughs> exactly. They get all the hard questions. They do. I don't, I don't no, discriminate. No, you I don't, don't discriminate. Say, I don't but discriminate. No, they, they really have a lot of knowledge. John, I'm, I'm not just saying that. I and mean, I, coming I think, from me, I learn something every time I listen to them. 
So if you haven't turned in and listened to that, you guys should really listen to them and ask them some questions. They really have some a lot of experience. Absolutely. And uh, guys, if you have, if you are listening to them on iTunes or on Stitcher, leave them a review as well. Yes. Okay, and let them know that you appreciate it. Tim, I think the last episode they did was from the Southern Fried Game Room Expo. Had an interview with Billy Mitchell. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys can check that out. Um, some really great information there. And we want to thank Eric and Rusty for all the hard work they put into the podcast. It's great stuff. And, Tim, we have our social media pages. We have our Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com and our Twitter feed at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. And if you follow us there, you probably saw a GIF from the last live show of mm-hmm. Tim saying, every Christmas you need to handwrite your grandmother. Yes. Okay? And so uh, we had a reply on Twitter, uh-huh. Tim, where somebody said, Arcade okay. Repair Tips just became Ar- Life Repair Tips. There you go. So that is true. We have we That's a new name, Tim. Life Repair Tips, man. Right. And people may not know, we take questions on anything, not just Arcade Repair. So if you've got personal matters, Tim, yeah. we'll be happy to tackle those for you as well. You I can't say we're any good at it, but we'll try. If you <laughs> so. haven't written your grandmother lately, you should really take some time and write it. <laughs> there you go. Not just at Christmas. Right, not just at Christmas. Not just Don't at Christmas. Don't wait that long. Don't wait that long. That's right. Now, Tim, I will say I've already made the gift for the next video, and you've seen it. Yes. And it's very funny. Okay. Okay, so we'll just tease that. Um, there you go. So uh, let's continue on here, guys. And then, of course, Facebook and Twitter, like we mentioned, Tim. Tim, we want to thank Mark and Louie for the fantastic job they do finding com- you know, all sorts of news from all over the place. They post it on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Tim, Mark does an absolutely fantastic job uh, getting the pinball stuff on there. A lot yeah. of the pinball stuff that you guys see has been posted by Mark. Uh, Louie finds stuff from just all over the place posted on the Facebook feed. We want to thank both those guys for all their work. I was going to show somebody something that was posted the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot. <laughs> I forget. And, and I was like, oh, well, I haven't even read that one myself. I was like, I got to bookmark this. I got to go back. There's a lot of stuff on that Facebook page. A lot of general questions that get answered very quickly. Um, we all work together, and we, we got several people that are watching that, and they post some really good articles, some fun articles, some informative articles, uh, tools on sale, stuff like that. So if you haven't checked out our Facebook page, please do so and join us. And we should also mention, Tim, that everybody here at Arcade Repair Tips works for free. It's yeah. a volunteer effort. So so Mark and Louie, they don't get paid. Uh, Eric and Rusty do not get paid. And Tim, we don't make anything. No. So, so Except for what the people donate tonight. So right. thank you for the donations. Um, otherwise, we don't make anything. So we want to thank everybody who, work, who volunteers their time generously to help you out with your arcade repair issues. Tim, that does it for the, um, for the regular show. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, after this, we're going to be doing an after show where we'll talk about non-arcade related things. Maybe some arcade related things but um, mostly non-arcade related things going forward. So if you want to get off here, if this is your exit, then uh, thank you for joining us tonight. If not, we would encourage you to stay tuned for the live show. Tim, I think we have a tease, right? You're going to tell us more about your trip to L.A., right? Yeah, I'm going to actually show some pictures. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and talk and about just gonna, a little few stories. Right, and we're like going to talk about some questions that aren't necessarily repair related that we got recently about like some of the games around the game room and some other things, right? Yes. So if you want to hear more about that, please stay tuned for the after show. But if this is your exit ramp, thank you for joining us tonight. And here at Arcade Repair Tips, Tim, when we fix the game, we, we play, play the, the game. game. You take care, everybody, and you, hopefully we'll see you. Then you buy another game. There you go. Hopefully we'll see you in the after show. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
And we're back. Hey. Hey, there we go. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the uh, after show for episode 19 of the live show. And uh, Tim, let's see. Um, the first thing I have on the outline here is um, after questions and comments from viewers. Okay. After show questions and comments from viewers. And so I guess we'll start there. All right. Okay. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. This first one is from Glenn. And Glenn says, hello there. Thank you so much for addressing our question on your show. And Tim, uh, Glenn, if you remember, was from the last show. Okay. He said, it was awesome. We really learned a lot, both about our machine and arcade repair in general. You're doing an awesome job, and we'll be sure to turn in in the future. Wow. It's always good to have uh, more viewers, and we always yes. appreciate that. And about your debate regarding tokens, tickets at arcades. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's been a hot topic within our family. We certainly miss the days of running around with a fistful of tokens and winning piles of tickets from machines. I guess that's some things, or sometimes things just have to change, but it's good to know that there are still those out here there who appreciate the good old days. So thanks again, and all the best to you and your awesome show. Take care, Glenn. Tim, I love you emails know, like that. You know, one thing, Johnson, that we talked about last time, Chuck E. Cheese doubled almost the amount of tickets they're giving out. Right. Well, that is double the amount of tickets going through the ticket munchers. Right. So I've really had to up my pars on uh, the repairs for them and stuff. Right. And now I'm thinking... You know, yes, I like tickets, but boy, if you don't have to stand in line at all at that ticket muncher, and we get really busy. It is a beat busy. down. It is a beat it down. It is I've a beat down, and then you're waiting in line up there. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that's one thing. If we go to ticketless, I think that I would use as a plus. Well, we, you no longer have to stick them in a machine. Right. And it jams up. They, they just do. I mean, gosh, I've done everything, and I think I keep mine in pretty good condition. They're still not perfect. There you go. Well, Tim, I think I, I understand. I yeah. understand. So I mean, it is what it is. But I, I just like the I like the email. Yeah, that was I mean, a nice I, email. Know, it's always good to get emails like yeah. that. Now, Tim, I think Jason's here. Okay, hey Jason. He, and so he says, "Hey guys, great show. I was wondering what game is next to the police trainer, and what games are currently in y'all's collection or lineups." Thanks. Okay. Oh, and he says elementary, which I assume the TV series Tim rocks out loud. Okay. So um, we always talk about TV shows. So yeah. uh, Elementary is one. Of his. Have you watched that? No. I've heard good things, but I've, I've I never tuned in. And another one I want to see. Um, we'll get TV talk in a second. Yeah. Uh, want... Let's let's answer Jason's question. Okay. So um, let's that, see here. So I must be talking about this. This is right, the right, Street right. Fighter. Well, hang on a second. We got Miss well, Pac-Man. Yeah. One. Galaga Police Trainer. It is a Street Fighter, but it's not. Okay. But it's a not. um. It's a main cabinet. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Originally, it was a street right, fighter. Right, it was a, hyper well, fighting. It was a um. Actually, Tim, it was a. When I got it, it was a Metal Slug Six. So it's a generic Dynamo cabinet. That's not the one we went all up in the country and. No. Got off. When the grass was this tall. No, 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 no. Okay. That is a different one. Um, that that came from Colby. It came with a Wells Garner LCD in it. Oh yeah. So it has a Wells Garner. LCD in it. Nice. And it is fantastic. The picture in that thing is incredible. It is mounted in there, Tim. Uh -huh. And I had to remount it because he had it too far back. I like the LCDs. When I mount an LCD, guys, I mount it like right up against the bezel. Right. Because I want it I like, I don't like the sunken look with LCDs. No. I want them all the way up. Topping. So I remounted it to where it's flat with the bezel. Like the arcade one up. Exactly. Just right like the right arcade one up. Right exactly. So it is a main cabinet that right now is playing. Um, I think it's got Dreamcast game. Like, my Dreamcast emulator is the main thing I play in there. So it plays uh, Power Stone, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and all that. I have a Dreamcast and all those games. So. You want to go around the game room with him? Or <clears throat> um, let's, well, I mean, a lot of people, if you've saw, if you seen the soldering video, Tim, you've yeah, seen you this see the, wall. the wall. You've seen this wall that starts the wall, with... The fighting wall. <clears throat> that's right. Mega Touch, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat 2, uh, the Blitz Showtime combination, Marvel vs. Capcom Tekken Tag, and then Pinball Machines, Monopoly, and X-Men. Yes. And then I have an arcade classics that used to be a joust. Um, but when I got it, Tim, it wasn't a joust. It was a cyber ball. Yes. It had been converted, but I converted it to like an arcade classics. It's got a, uh, four, like it's got one of those multi boards, horizontal multi boards in there. I've got an original Donkey Kong that's in fantastic shape. And I have a Pac Man cabaret. Right. And a um, multi cake cocktail. Is that everything? And a pool table. And a pool table. So there you go. So, um, I mean, I, I would take the camera down, Tim, but I've already got it where I want. I like the yeah. camera right here. So, um, uh, watch we our videos. That. You'll see more of them <laughs> If in you the watch background. the videos, all the games in the videos are mine. Tim's are on storage. So, But he yeah. has quite a few, but uh, they're on the storage. I've got three Trons I need to get rid of. Uh, Centipede, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. Um, gosh, I don't know. Uh, you thinned a, out a lot of a, it. A Williams Multicade in yeah. there. I was about to say, you've thinned out a lot of it, though. Yeah. I can't remember if there's anything else. I've owned about 
50 games. Right, I was about to say more than that. Probably. Oh, yeah, more than that. But, I mean, it's just, you know, you pair, you pair it down. I was about to say you've paired yeah, down. Yeah, I've, I've had to uh, adjust some since I moved, but I'll get back there. There you go. So, um, uh, there you go. I guess that's it. Uh, let's see. Um, let's talk movies. Well, we'll get to that here in a second. Um, okay. We're going to put everything else on hold for a second, Tim, because um, I want to get to uh, some of this. I really want to get to your trip to L.A. Okay. Okay, because you told us about the Arcade 1-Up visit. Right. Okay. But and, um, tell us about <laughs> the rest of your visits. <laughs> I would just like to say, if you live in the Los Angeles uh, area. Somebody, somebody was in here from Los Angeles. That's I think awesome. Danny, I think she, uh, or he or she, whoever it is, said that they were from Los oh, Angeles. Oh, awesome. Uh, prayers for you and your family. <laughs> uh, coming from East Texas, that was the real California I kind of expected when I first went out there. Sure. I had no idea. When I was in Silicon Valley, it's a different crowd. Right. Different crowd in L.A. And, okay, uh, I'm gonna, can I show your pictures? Yes, please show okay, them. I'll show... Uh, I'm near the P1 Studios right there. As you can see, it's not very far from downtown. Um, I was trying to take something in that second picture. I think I drove actually drove past it. There's just some views, street views and stuff to show you kind of where the studio was right off of there. Now, uh, I, I was going to show them these too because yeah, I think some them. of these are pretty telling. Okay. is And... Uh, as you can see there, uh, you actually get a discount in L.A. You never have to paint the outside of your building. People will do it for you for oh, free. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, my goodness. And they do it in the arcade graphic style. Works for me. Which is pretty <laughs> cool. Uh, they Unfortunately, they do like to sleep on your sidewalk. Oh, okay. So, you know, and uh, I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, we went out to Santa Monica, and we went to the boardwalk, and uh, there was a whack-a-mole Tacos. <laughs> uh, I wanted to uh, hit some tacos with a hammer, but you know, did that they didn't have work a whack a mole? Uh, they did not have a whack a mole. Oh, you so see that, that that is just false just, advertising. Right it there. is. Um, but if you don't know, there's sixty thousand people that are homeless in L.A. and uh, there's uh, homeless shelters are overrun. There's a kind of a big problem. And um, but my and my wife was like. Why would there be? Why would you be homeless in L.A.? Why not? And I said, well, you got to understand, it's really hot here right. all the time. It's actually the weather is great there. Uh, walking out the plane, I went from 98 to 68. Wow! And it was like a crazy uh, difference at night. You don't the air conditioner doesn't. You can uh, have a window up or something. It just feels a lot of breeze. A lot of the ocean air is coming through. I see why people like to live there. It's very beautiful. Uh, the scenic. But I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't want to offend anybody. But about one, out, two out of ten people is totally crazy. <laughs> like totally crazy. Totally crazy. Okay. <laughs> they out there. I mean, they're... I'm about to say. I mean, Californians are a little you, bit different. Have you been to the backwoods parts of East Texas? I yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. Okay. Them people are are they're they're backwoods, but they're crazy and they're just just out. I mean, these people off the map crazy. Okay. You could stand up in a crowded room and just go blah, 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 and run around and nobody would even pay attention. You know why? Because you wouldn't be the only person doing it. Okay. <laughs> um, now, you had a story. I have a story. Okay. In fact, um, if you want to show the next slide, uh, okay. just to show you, we were in Santa Monica. And as you can I feel like this is family vacation or something. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see how beautiful slides. it is, you see the mountains in the background. The sun was setting. There was a park bench there. And a guy was proposing to his girlfriend. Yeah, I gotta get your facial expressions there. This is very important. So a guy was proposing to his girlfriend right there in front of everybody. People had their phones out and were videoing and people were clapping and aw and all that stuff. And I thought it was a wonderful moment. Sure. Great timing on this guy's part. Great sunset. I mean the sunset was coming. I was like, this guy is nailing it. On the other side of that park bench was a homeless guy with his pants down, face flat on the ground, with his arms out like that, with his face right in the mud. And uh, nobody paid him any attention. <laughs> so you got the wonderful love scene here, and then the guy face planted right down there, and nobody even paid attention. I didn't know if he was alive, dead, <laughs> afraid to check. <laughs> his pants were down i don't know what he was doing down there poor gopher or whatever was down there who knows but that was life that's it and uh walk down the boardwalk there was a lady singing that sounded like she could have been on american idol uh the next person was definitely drunk and couldn't carry a tune <laughs> and was singing even louder 
And then the next person was a Hispanic person playing a guitar and a Spanish themes with a Trump mask on. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, I don't know what his point was. I don't know if he liked Trump, didn't like Trump, or if he's just being weird. Eh? I think it was the latter. There you and go. <laughs> so, uh, well, definitely you get to see and experience a lot of a culture. A wide down variety. There. Huh? A wide variety of people. You know, actually, I had a great time. Everybody's really friendly. I will say that. Uh, most Californians are in the And the, the, the P1 Studios people, I mean, I, I set the interview, or the interview, the meeting with Tim, and they could not have been nicer. Been, been over backwards. Yeah. I, 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 I do, you know, after talking to them and understanding why they made it so small and things, it kind of puts things into perspective. you got to understand the business side of it. We're collectors. We right. want... You know, we want... I think the license argument, though, that you made, and, you know, we didn't say this during the show, but I think it makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. It makes sense for why they're only making a certain size. Well, they can't. That's exactly. part of their agreement. They can't. they can't be more than so big because they're really used to making little bitty things. Exactly. So they made it as big as they could. Right. So, so that, I, I that answers really that question. I think if a lot of people wonder about size, well, I mean, you're, you're limited. Right, because... Who knows how much the license cost cost if you and go up from that? Yeah, because then, it's be, it's then, then be arcades more. are going to want them. Exactly. And it's not made for arcades; it's made for home use. It's a uh, you know, it's made for that. So anyway, uh, really had a good time. Just like I said, uh, went to if you are in LA, go to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. There you go. And I had some good local flair. You know, one thing that's cool about uh, uh, I never really felt threatened though. Right. And there's not a lot of police presence. I was surprised. Right. Um, I think a lot of things have changed. A lot of there were a lot of multicultures and stuff. I never really felt threatened. I just didn't like the traffic and and a lot of stuff. I understand that. It would just be a whole world if you live out there and um, and then just seeing the the people that um, if you don't know John, there's a debate. You know they won't let them use restrooms anymore. So a lot of them, yeah. So a lot of them are using on the sidewalk stuff. And, and things like that. I mean, there. I really felt for people, and but I also understand the business side of it, you know, and stuff. So, uh, in the wildfires and stuff out there, if you're in that area, I want you to know you're in our thoughts and prayers. We do feel, and uh, I really would hate for for California to succeed. It's a beautiful uh, state. It's a lot of fun to visit. Just don't know that it's for me to live there. I like Texas. I'm kind of partial to Texas. But Absolutely. That's my trip. There you go. Now, Tim, uh, let's get an investment update real quick. How's our $10 doing? You know, uh, honestly, it was... Ex- oh, hang on. Uh, for those who are just watching, um, how many shows ago now? Uh, probably about three shows ago. I think it was YouTube Punk gave us 10 bucks. He did. And so I sent invest. that to Tim. And I said, let's and invest it and see what happens. And so we've been doing, Tim has been investing this $10 in different things. And see. Tim, um, for those who aren't familiar, exactly we use Robinhood for our yes. platform for investing. And there are links down below in the show notes. If you guys want to get into investing using Robinhood, um, it's free and you can get a free stock. We so, both get a free stock. Yeah, if you, you or uh, you get a free stock and either me or Tim get a free stock depending on which link you use. So um, we highly recommend it if you haven't signed up for Robinhood, you know, just try it. It's actually pretty cool, and it's cool to take ownership, Tim, in right. companies. Yeah, it's so. neat, and it's a good way. Like I said, we don't don't play with your rent money or your uh, grocery money. If you got some extra money and you'd like to invest, there's some really good companies that you need the money. They're doing a lot of good things, uh, a lot of good stuff coming down the line. Um, and uh, you know, the the stock I I bought for ten dollars is now eleven dollars and seventy five cents. There you go. It went up to about fourteen bucks not long ago, and uh, we found out there were some very powerful people in uh, the stock world. And one guy made one comment about it, and it plunged to thirty percent one day. That's all it takes. And then it come back up, so it's on the on the rise. We are definitely making money. Uh, off our ten dollars, we're up to eleven dollars and seventy-five cents as go. of right now. <laughs> so as of this moment, just so we have it. not lost anything. We have gained. No, money. we're we're in the we're in the uh, we're in the bread or the black. We're in the yeah, black. We're in the black. We're in the black. So it sounds I'm good. Now, something I do want to remind people, Tim, because I bought into it, is that Nintendo is now on Robinhood. That's right. So if you want to buy stock in Nintendo, you can now buy it on Robinhood. Now, Nintendo, Tim, is part of a foreign market. Right. But Robinhood will now allow you to trade certain stocks on foreign markets. Uh, Nintendo is one of those stocks. Adidas is one of those stocks. I forget some of the other ones that were yeah, in there. Yeah, and it's about uh, 43 $44 a share right now. Yeah, Nintendo is. So I now have two shares of Nintendo stock. 
Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So I, I feel, I, you know, I have a Nintendo Switch, and I feel good about owning Nintendo stock. Yeah. So there you go. And uh, speaking of the Switch, Tim, I'll go ahead and move into that. I have finished playing Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey, the latest one. I, I say finished. We finished, me and my daughter finished the main storyline. Okay. And it is fantastic. Okay. It is a great game. Um, Tim, there's way more 2D platforming, 8-bit 2D platforming in it than you'd ever think. Wow. So you play like old school Mario in several parts in the game. That's cool. Um, it, and she it, likes it too. Oh, Olivia loves it. Wow. And so we played every night. Um, we're still getting moons. We're still progressing even though we beat the main story. There's still a lot more to do after you beat the game. And so I um, really like that game. And it is probably one of the best games I've played in oh, who knows how long. Wow. So, highly recommend Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch if you have a Switch. So, there you go. <clears throat> uh, speaking of Nintendo products, didn't you buy something recently? I did. So, show what did I picture. buy? So, let me show you. And, Tim, I think we posted this up on the uh, Facebook page. We did. I know we did. And I bought the um, Donkey Kong Hallmark Keepsake Ornament, which is now $20. And, Tim, I just put the Coke can there for scale. For scale, okay. I will tell you what the... Um, they did a fantastic job on this thing. It looks just like a Donkey Kong cabinet. Yeah. Now, somebody was saying that the little money sticker is crooked. Okay. <laughs> it seems like I remember them always being crooked. Yeah. Is that just funny. me? Like, Maybe somebody's so. like, why are they all crooked on all of them? It's just like they're always crooked. I'm going to check mine real quick. <laughs> uh, mine's kind of straight. It's pretty worn. Okay. But I mean, it's a little straight, but I think the crookedness gives it, like, some character. <laughs> okay. Like, the, little, the coin amounts and everything. But, Tim, that thing is the closest. I mean, it's the same shape. That's a sound, Sam. Perfect. Oh, wow. I mean, it's a little tinny. Plays a little song. A little song. tinny, but it plays everything just like the Pac-Man and the Galaga cabinets wow. do. I mean, it's really cool. For 20 bucks, Tim, so <laughs> worth How it. How cool. Go get one right, right now. $20. I mean, it is, it is really good. So, <clears throat> but anyway, it, it was fun. And like you can see, compared to the Coke can, it's just a little bit smaller than that Coke can. So, okay, let's continue on here. Oh, that's our outline. Okay, Tim, uh, let's see. Movies? I think, um, well, star of the NFL college football season, Tim, and uh, boys to men, as we're watching, is singing the national anthem right now. And we're about to kick off, what is this, Eagles and Falcons? Yes, Eagles and the Falcons. So um, we're about to kick off, Tim. Did you do your fantasy draft, I assume? Yes, I did. Who'd you end up with? I ended up with, oh, I'm going to have to pull them up. I got to get my phone. Because I'm playing a couple it. leagues, but I, the one I, my main quarterback, Andrew Luck. Now, so, um, Michael said 20 bucks. Oof. So worth the $20. I'm yeah. I'm telling you, so worth it. And that thing's going to rise in value. Have you seen the prices of the Pac-Man Galaga Hallmark Keepsake or- Ornaments? Like, no, I got some. They're high. Box. Yeah, they're high. I need to sell them. Yeah, check them out on okay. eBay. They're high. So, worth the 20 bucks. Awesome. So, uh, Tim, I've got Houston's quarterback, but I can't remember his name. Okay. Okay, I remember him. I've got him. I've got uh, Gronk. Okay, for I my do. tight end. I do, I do too. And so, I have Mike Evans. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, um, oh gosh. I can't remember who else I have, I'm though. pulling it up. Yeah, I have to pull mine up, too. But if those of you guys who play fantasy football, it's a lot of fun. I love playing fantasy football. So, I mean, it's really good. Um, Tim, of course, Cowboys. Tim, I've got tickets to a Cowboys. I got, oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. The 29th when of November. Going? No, oh. I, my, I was lucky to get tickets to, <laughs> <laughs> to a Cowboy game. LeSean oh, McCoy. <laughs> oh, LeSean McCoy. Uh, Andrew Luck is your quarterback. Yeah, and I've got DeAndre Hopkins. There you go. i got some pretty good receivers. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Falcons defense, so I'll have to root for them tonight. And you got uh, a New England kicker, Goskowski. Yeah, and I noticed that we're doing a head coach points. I don't know what that is. About. I don't know what that is either. It's just a couple points. I don't know. I got yeah, yeah. the, but I got the Patriots head coach. Yeah, so, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. So anyway, he's definitely worth extra points if anybody is. I got a decent team. You know, we auto draft in my league. Yeah, so we do in my like, league yeah. too. Everybody's getting out away from the draft because nobody can get on the same time. Tim, I think everybody that. left. They're already watching the NFL football game. Maybe so. Well, we'll they're still around. They're just not talking. I, I think that's it. Because I mean, I'm, we're watching it here and we see the toss and everything like that. Hey, we're doing the show and we're watching. Okay, you guys can do the same. So. Um, so how? So did you? Did you now, Jonathan? Something interesting happened at the Texas football game. I want to bring up. Oh, do you how did, we got beat? No, okay. no. <laughs> did you hear what happened at the start of the game? I did not. I did okay. not watch the start. Of the game. Well, here is a fantastic story that even made an Oklahoma fan proud of Texas. There you go. Okay, you want to hear? It? I want to hear. It. Okay, if you don't know, Maryland's coach is on suspension. Right. And the reason why is because they that. had a player that died in practice. Right. Okay, well, when they took the field, they come at the start of the game. They were starting their first play. They only had ten men. 
and they told the Texas coach, "We're gonna, we're not gonna hike the ball. We're gonna take ten minutes." Tom Herman. We're going right. to take the. We're just gonna take. Let the time run out. Okay. So the time expires. They're honoring their missing teammate. They start to send in another guy. Texas declines the penalty. Super class act on Texas' part. Right. In other words, they took a penalty and said, we'd rather take the penalty and honor our get or our guy that died and play with 10 men right now. And Texas says, we declined the penalty. We also honor him. I thought that was really – I think that was good on both schools' parts to do that and how Texas handled that I thought was really good. Now, how they played, different story. Sorry, John. They really didn't play bad. No, they, they could have won. but This is the first year of the Tom Herman, right? First yeah. Year? Yeah, I was about to say, because Charlie Strong was there last year. Yeah, right? they weren't. They, they had their flashes, though. Right. And they played a good team. you got to give them that. Now, they yeah. didn't play, you know. They didn't play Oklahoma. <laughs> no, right. They didn't play. All right, come on now. Oklahoma, Oklahoma played a good team and blew right. them away. Right. Oklahoma looks really good this year. Defensive-wise, they look way better. I was really impressed. LSU's defense looks awesome, too. But anyway, uh, we love football season. Uh, we love to uh, talk. What's your team? If yeah. you're in the chat you got a team. and you want now, to shout uh, out. says, how about those boys? Big Cowboys fans here. But, Tim, we're hurting. Travis Frederick, probably not going to play. Oh, no. Our all-pro center. Yeah. He's got um, Gillian Barre, which is yeah. autoimmune disease. Yes. So, um, so uh, you know, shout out. Out for to, the year? Uh, maybe. Maybe. So they got him on, like, the they got him on like the extended, what do you call it, injury reserve or yeah. whatever, but, um, which means he can't play six games. Wow. But there's a possibility he could come back after that. I hope so. Yeah, well, the main thing is to get healthy, and exactly. that's what they said. If you catch it early, you do what the doctors say, there's a good chance he can come back. So I hope so. I hate to see anybody get hurt. Um, has Des Bryant been picked up by anybody yet? Not that I know of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Browns he talked to, I know, but I haven't heard anything past that. But then the Cowboys cut Dan Bailey. What would you think about that? That was a big shock. Um, but, you know, I mean, they're saving, I think, $2.5 by doing that. It's a lot of money. Man, it comes up. You can put up. that to a lot of different things. What have you done for me lately? I it know. Just, that, was yeah. a, that was a tough one, though, and I think it was a tough decision. The second most accurate in, um, kicker in, in NFL history. Right. But he had misses last year. He did. He did. It missed two but he extra was injured. points. But he was injured. Right. Okay, so I'm not going to say he had some groin issues, apparently. Right, but he didn't kick much in preseason. Right. You're thinking he's got already made the team. He's just not even going to use him. Exactly. And then he gets cut. Yep. It's That's but the I mean, business I, I think, side of it. I think the biggest thing I'm going to miss is Jason Witten. And oh, whoever yeah. we're going to try to replace with him, we've got some tight ends on the team. But, um, you know, I think... Um, Jason yeah, Witten will be a coach somewhere someday. If you've ever watched... Uh, him. He's got, he got a media gig, right? He, yeah, I he did. Too. And he'll be good at that too. But he would be a great coach. Yeah. So um, I think our defense will be good, but our offense I think is going to be rough because I mean I think we're heavily going to have to lean on Cole Beasley, which is rough because I mean he's he I mean, he's a good receiver, but I mean he's not a deep threat really. Right. So I mean it's going to be interesting to see you know if we have a deep threat at all we got you know some backup we got some young guys that are played really good in the preseason right. but and i mean i don't know how tight end's going to be without jason Witten there i mean we're just going to have to see so the defense go. is going to be pretty good i think they okay. get, they're starting to get gelled together i hope i hope you're right but um, defense wins championships okay to the media stuff real quick okay hey. movie and tv talk so, uh, Tim, I'll start with you because you didn't send me anything for this. So, what have you been watching? Have you watched well, anything? Well, I finished up season two of Glow, okay, which was, you think? was great and yeah, funny, fun. and I loved how it ended. Yep, the ending that was, was good. a great ending. Um, I've been watching The Good Place since season two came out. I think it's very funny. Uh, Ted Danson is hilarious. I do like Ted Danson, and the girl that plays the, the yeah. main character, her and him together, are just hilarious. Um, I went and saw a movie. But, oh, I saying. went and saw a chick flick with my wife. Okay. Went and saw Crazy Rich Asians. Okay, I, this has gotten a lot of publicity. And you know what? I was expecting a romantic comedy. It was more drama than it was romance. Huh. But a great movie. It was go. good. It had a few little you know, times when my eyes were watering a little. No. Uh, <laughs> you got a little tear. You know, it was, it was just a good... It was really a good movie. I liked the the um, premise or whatever the storyline was right. all was got was really good. Oh, Jason, you forgot about your rental car. What was your rental car in LA? Oh, that was an interesting one because um, my 
a teammate was an Eagles fan, and he said he was going to get a pickup and make me ride in the back the whole time. <laughs> there you go. But fortunately, um, we had our choice, and the first choice of me was a Dodge uh, Challenger. There you go. And I thought that's what we were going to get. And he said, we need something with a little more room. And uh, it actually ended up where we were in uh, Torrance, California, which, guys, if you've ever seen the movie Friday was filmed right up the street and uh we were in a black cadillac so we had a st s5 or something i don't know it was nice nice it was comfortable there you go and had lots of room huge trunk there you go so we're driving around in a black cadillac we kind of fit in down there i don't know it just, <laughs> we just uh it just fit so yeah it was a rental car it was a it was a black cadillac this time it was different for now me. um uh, uh tex jyt says um he's looking forward to the nun yeah, coming up. So, me too. That looks. Now I don't know good. anything about this. You, have to you don't. Me. Oh, the nun is the. Um, help, help me here. It's the sequel to all the. Um, the scary, scary movies. Um, there's, they're about a real, about the stuff in a doll. Gosh, I can't think of it. Somebody help me here. I'm stumbling. But if somebody will know, he'll help me here in just a second. <laughs> it's a sequel to all these movies, uh, kind of like they were real life deal uh-huh. and they, there were a couple and in the, basically these movies have been about their ghost hunting experiences haunting the haunting right. was one of them okay it's a sequel to this movie anyway uh be a good Halloween conjuring movie. conjuring yes there thank you. you oh i don't know why i had that big brain fart right thank there. you michael yeah thank you michael the conjuring if you've ever um heard of those movies the nun is a sequel or the next in line in those lines of movies. Did we get all your thoughts on Crazy Rich Asians, by the way? Yeah, Crazy, Crazy Rich Asians were just... <clears throat> it's just a, it's, it has funny parts in it. Or whatever it, it is. Yeah. But it was definitely good. Take your wife to see it. She'll be happy and <laughs> appreciate it. Anything else? Um, let's see. What else have I been watching? Um, um, Tex JYT says, finish season two of Ozark. And you see, I tried to watch season one. See, I did too. And I, I was not a huge I've, fan. I've heard you really got to wait about four got, episodes. See, I made it through about two. Pick. And yeah. I'm just like, this is not my show. But I mean, the first episode is good. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, it took... I, I I was the same way. I watched like three episodes and it was kind of slow. But I've heard and four And the people the who really like it are people that I would think would like the stuff that I like. So right. maybe I have to give it a... Maybe I'll be bored one night and just give it another shot, you know? Right. Oh, um, Michael says, I'm late to the show. Sorry, still need help in Houston. Well, come on, Michael. What, what you, you got? got going on? So let us know. We'll, we'll be happy to help. Uh, let's continue on. Annabelle was another one. Annabelle, yeah, Annabelle okay. in The Conjuring. Okay. Yes. So there you go. So like of the, the same nun. series. Okay. So let me talk about some of the stuff I saw. I saw um, Action Point, which oh, is a movie okay. with Johnny Knoxville about... Yes. Um, it's about Action Park. <laughs> yeah, Action Park. It's kind of a parody of that in a way. If you if you don't know what Action Park is, you need to Google and read about it. That is crazy. So they take that concept to the extreme, obviously, yes. and it's pretty funny. Um, it's it's dumb, but it kills some time, and it's funny. You'll you'll have a good time with it. You know, it's not something you should buy, but rent right. it. And if you want to watch something fun, if you've ever been to Action Park, I really want to hear from you. <laughs> there are people who wear shirts. I survived Action Park right. in the '80s and stuff. It, for those who don't know, apparently Action Park was a very dangerous park that closed down because of lawsuits. Actually, not set, specifically not because of lawsuits, but they had a lot of lawsuits. I want to say uh, over hurt. a dozen and people died yeah exactly. it was like crazy like like not just one or two it was like a bunch that right. died so action point is kind of a parody of that johnny knoxville runs that. the place and it's funny it's and on it's on, it's on on demand on so demand okay it. um i also watched uh, deadpool 2 okay because um i like the first one and the second one is more of the first one so say. if you like if you like deadpool you're gonna like deadpool 2 and there's some really funny really funny moments in it and um you really should watch it if you like that kind of stuff. Now, Tim, I've um, I've been watching, I guess, two different series, but, I mean, a third one coming up on Friday. Um, I was just on Netflix, and I caught a series called Magic for Humans. I've seen that. Have you seen it? It's caught my attention a couple times. It's six episodes. Okay. They're about an hour long. All right. Um, it's got some mature stuff in it, so okay. you need to kind of be careful with it, but it's great. Okay. It's kind of... Have you ever seen the show Mind Games on, like, um, uh, oh, not Discovery, but... Um, uh, what's the other channel? That's kind I've of never discovered. seen it, but it, I know Mind it. Games is kind. Of, it's kind of like it teaches you things about how your brain works. Okay. And like they show you different things, and um, and it's kind of like a cross between that and a magic show. 
Okay. So it kind of teaches you a little bit about like how we perceive how the magic things. Works or... Not really so much how the magic works, but how we perceive things, okay. and then how, and then kind of uses magic to present that to you. Okay. So um, it's very good though. I'll try it. So Magic for Humans on Netflix is six episodes. The last episode's kind of weird, but okay. I mean the rest of them are really good. So okay. I mean, but the last episode's fine. I mean, it, it's just a little weird. Okay. So, um, I've also been watching Jack Ryan. See, I want to see that, too. So I am on episode five, uh, and I'll be honest, I fell asleep in some of the episodes. Because here's the deal. Okay, this is the pacing. Slow story, 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 story. 40 my, 45 minutes. Story, story, story. Last 15 minutes. Action, 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 action. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, and so then 45 minutes in the first episode. Slow, 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 yeah. slow, slow, slow. 15 minutes to the end. Action, action, action. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of, that's kind okay. of the way that, the, that it goes, is that you get like kind of 45 minutes of story exposition. So make sure it's not your bedtime when you start that's watching. That's right, exactly. Right? And then 15 minutes of like real heavy action. Okay. And mm-hmm. the action is awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong. But if you're expecting it to be like all action, like we're just blowing up cars left and right. right <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It is not all action. There's a lot of story that goes on with it. And the, the, main, the main actor is guy from The Office? John Krasinski. Yeah, okay. How, who played how Jim. Does, yeah, how he's does... He's fantastic. Have you he's... seen... Zero, um, what, I mean, he was in... Um, what was the Benghazi one? Yeah, like seventy-two hours yes. or whatever. If you've seen that, he's really good in that one, and he plays kind of a similar character here. Okay, he's not a funny guy. Nope. Like normally, there's you some think funny of, in it, right? But he's not. Right. He can so. play a good serious role. Right. Exactly. And I am going to be watching Iron Fist season two yes, coming up too. on Netflix at the when end. When's that coming out? Friday. Tomorrow. Okay. So actually, be, midnight tonight or whatever. I'll Sorry. be watching. Uh, let's see what else we have. Looking here. for that. Um, let's see. Um, Michael, did you ask a question? Well, yet? I'll get him here in a second. Um, oh, YouTube Punk said had the loop de loop slide. Yeah, that's the that's the action yeah, park that we're talking the about. The cannonball slide. If you've slide. not seen it, Deadwood was absolutely incredible. It was an HBO series, so the language can be coarse. It's on Amazon Prime. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Okay. So, I've heard good things about Deadwood. So, now Michael says, uh, I'm the guy that wanted to do the live show here, and you had staff in Houston that can help me go through my games. So, Michael, we passed your name along to Rusty. Okay. Okay. I passed your phone number and your name along to Rusty Key. And he should be getting in contact with you very soon. So um, we have not... If he hasn't gotten in contact with you, I'm sorry. But um, uh, he works on games, and I know he's very busy. So right. um, hopefully he'll be getting in contact with you once he has some time to actually get some repairs in. But we did pass your name and your phone number along to Rusty. So hopefully he'll be getting in contact with you soon once he has some time if to If you've never get been to the Game Preserve, yes, um, you could go and hang out there and meet some guys right. that could help too or, or pass, pass along. Rusty is actually one of the co-owners of the yes, Game, he is. game so Preserve. You so. might catch him at the Game Preserve. Right. I think, guess it's, is it thegamepreserve.com? Or I think it Houston is. We have a link to it on Google our website. Google Game Preserve Houston. It'll come up right so if you go to the game game preserve rusty's one of the owners there and so you may contact him but he can he should be able to help you out um but we did pass your phone number and your information on to him and but i mean tim the thing about it is is that we're busy right we're all busy and i know rusty may be backed up on repairs right now so it may be a while before he gets around to you michael but i'm sure that he's gonna hope oh it says rusty's been here several times there you go Mm -hmm. so i mean so there you go i mean hopefully he can help you out rusty's pretty good at repairs tim oh yeah so i mean considering he's one of the co-owners of the game preserve you know he should know what he's doing. So, absolutely. And, of course, he does the question and answer podcast with us, right. right, Tim? So, there you go. So, there you go. Anyway. Okay, Tim. Did we did we cover everything? I think so. I think we did. It's getting so, late. It is getting late. I gotta get up early. Uh, man, Tim, I, I this was such a whirlwind episode. Where did the last three hours go? I have no idea. Was it idea. three? Let's see. 5.30, Or 5.50, really. Right, yeah. Two and a half. A little late. Yeah, we were a little late. But um, last two and a half hours have been great, guys. We want to thank all of you guys for joining us tonight. And, um, you know, we just, we had a good time. And I, I'm so glad we got to hear about your trip. Yeah. And I'm so glad you got to hook up with the arcade repair, or the arcade one-up guys. I Me mean, too. Really... I really think that they deserve, you know, it may not, we may not be their, uh, we're definitely Customer. not the target audience. Right. We may not be customers. But guys, at, at least they're doing something that I think will bring some joy to a lot of people. And for the price, it's really a pretty good deal. Absolutely. So, so you know, and if you're just interested, I mean, there's a lot, you know, guys spending $300 on a repair. I mean, you can have a whole game for that shipped. Yep. And, then, and then the fun of putting it together with your kids or something, I, I don't know. I think they, I don't think we should definitely, we should give them a chance at least and understand their restraints are, what they can build. It's not bad. For the money, it's okay. There you go. So, well, guys, thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to end the, the after show right here. But um, we always appreciate everybody who came, who donated, who commented, who asked questions. 
Texas and all that good stuff, right, Tim? Yes, we and we're tired. Thank you. Uh, but Tex uh, JYT was like, do this twice a month. I'm like worn out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to get a, a, we'll have to get like Rusty no and Eric to left. do like the second the second episode, right? <laughs> like they can do the mid month episode or something yeah. like that, and we can do the, the main month. I don't know something. Maybe like that. one day. Maybe one day. Like I said, with enough donations, anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, hey, if, if you can quit your job at Chuck E. Cheese and do this <laughs> right. full time, I guess. we will definitely look at doing two a week. So Maybe so. Or two a week. Two uh, two, two a, a month. month. So there you go. Well, guys, I'm think, glad that somebody would want to watch us more than once a month. So thank you guys absolutely. for watching. I hope that you really get something out of it. We also try to have a little fun. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's what it, what life is about. And we like to talk about stuff that aren't game-related because, you know, we all do un-game-related stuff. That's right. And so, like Jonathan says, you can ask us a question about anything. Always remember you have somebody to talk to and somebody that cares about you and what's going on. You're not alone. Um, you know, so we have a lot of people that just, you know, I, don't, I, I hate to hear it. When I saw all these homeless people and in um, Los Angeles, you know, guys, a lot of people don't know my story. I was homeless for th almost three months one time. Right. And, and so I'm very sympathetic uh, to that crowd and those type of people. Some of us are just a paycheck or two missing from being in that position ourselves. So give generously where you can help people in your community help your neighbor. That's right. And write your grandma. <laughs> yeah, so, now text JYT says, LOL, what else do you have going on? Come on. I got two kids going on. <laughs> I, got, so, I got two kids. I got a wife. Um, I've got, I've I got, just got a teenager driving. There you go. I had to pass, we had to pass the driving test. Right. So and that, we still do repairs. That we almost that. freed up my time. Yeah, Saturday we have yeah, a repair, we have a repair schedule. So. Re repair job to go on. You know, life just gets busy. It seems like there's always something. Always once a month. Birth. Once a month is easy to schedule. First Thursday every month is easy to schedule. But um, we got a birthday every other month. Yeah. Seems like in my oh, family. Yeah. You know, we got to have a birthday party and life's fun. Yeah. Oh, Louis says, "Well said, Tim." On your little, on your little uh, thing there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's very good. Help somebody call grandma. They, uh, call your, call your parents. You know, guys, my, my I don't have, I have, um, by marriage, I have a grandmother now, and I, I enjoy talking to her. Do you know, I don't have, my parents are gone. People, you know, today, we, we should mention that today's the day Burt Reynolds died. That's right. And uh, how can you grow up in the 80s and 70s and not know who Burt Reynolds not is? Not who Burt Reynolds, you know, he'll always be the bandit. That's right. You know, he's, he's not around anymore. There's a lot of our folks, some of us, May not be around forever. <laughs> so enjoy the time that you have. You know, uh, you get on Facebook, people are, are fighting about this. How do you feel about that? And pull sides. Enjoy life. Have fun. Enjoy. We all have one thing in common, whether we voted or this way or that way, or we stand or we kneel or whatever it is. We all have games in common. They're fun to play. Let's find the common ground and enjoy. Enjoy life. And, and, uh, and, uh, and you know, meet your neighbors. Absolutely. Can I? Ask, I'm going to tell one story. We're going to get yeah, out of here. That's it. So uh, we went to go pick up a game. You and me, real close to where my grandma lives. Yes. And um, and you know I was like, man, you think you know I'm, we're real close to where my grandma lives, Tim? And um, you know, I may, you know, should I jump? Should I? Should we go or should we just get back home? It's kind of late. Right. And I remember you said you need to go see your grandmother. You need to take every chance you get to see your grandmother because you never know when the last time will be that you see your grandmother. Yeah. And we stopped that night with an arcade in the back of the truck. We did. And we saw my grandmother. We stayed for, I guess it was about an hour or something like that. And uh, she's still alive. Yeah. Okay, she's still she's still going. But um, uh, I think, um, you know, the right the handwrite your grandma that came from the last live show episode, yeah. <laughs> I mean, while it's funny, um, it, 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 it because it was just kind of a random line that was thrown out there, I mean, there's some truth to it. You know, yeah. you know contact your, your parents, your grandparents. Let them know you love them. You never know when something will happen, like, you know, like right. Burt Reynolds or something. I wish I could go see my grandmother. There you go. So, you know, take take the time. Enjoy life. Do something fun. Don't don't let work and things stress you out. And for, for all intensive person, uh, purposes, quit arguing and quit, you know, just love love somebody. Be, be your neighbor to your, your neighbor. Be the person that everybody else wants to be right. around. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. Right. Don't be disagreeable. Exactly. And, I mean, that's what I always say. It's like, you know, always, always respect other people's views regardless of whether or not you agree with them. Just so. think, what would Mario do? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and on that note... We're out. So thank you guys for Goodbye. joining us tonight. It's been a great time. And we'll see you first Thursday of every every month. First 5.30-ish. 5.30-ish. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
first Thursday of every month right here on the Arcade Repair Tips YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and have a great night and a great September. Bye. <laughs> well, yeah.